Hyde Park Select Board meeting to order at uh, six o'clock. Um, everybody that's here, there's nobody in the room with us, but oh, <laughs> I don't know. When we can look over and have Dave right here, I'm not sure what we're going to do. We're always trying to find him up there. It's like, oh, disappear, come back, disappear, come back. Uh, okay. All right. Do you know if we're. No, we see that one. Yeah, Tim Pease is online. So okay. Good. Cannot load file. Court sending you any more people? I'm trying to generate a list of um, the defense attorneys. Yeah. Because they're all saying, well, it isn't us, it's the negotiations we have between the attorneys and the, the state's attorney to, if it's a, you know, option, you know, to, if it'll work, you know, that type of thing. And it's true. And so what I'm trying to do is uh, get a whole list of them together and I'll send out a big email saying we're back in business and these are the options and clarify any sort of uh, I'll put okay, a whole explanation. Yep, yep. Then hopefully I'll start. But Barry, they got 10, 15 people a day and I had one person today to go out and pay today. Almost went back home and loaded up the tractor with a brush hog on it and went and did it because that's the way it should be done. Not with a 48 inch uh, walk behind the car. <laughs> Okay. We'll be able to hear. Okay. Do you have the agenda? Are you going to hear? Do you have it on your? Yeah, paper one. Here. Yeah, I'll take okay. a paper one. Yeah, because so this one here obviously isn't loading, and I'll load for the next twenty minutes. Mine wouldn't be either. It's for I. I know. I've been having trouble. It finally did, but it didn't take me a minute. That was hard. Heavy Heavy yeah. I think the old days, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. We say that tree. You can go back and tell. Exactly. I went ahead and went, oh, okay. The, te the, 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 the technology does yeah. work. Right. So retry okay. again. Okay. Okay. So um, mm -hmm. let's see. Do we have folks online? Uh, Jen Pease, can you hear us? Yep. Oh, I was going to say, but can we hear him? Yeah, yeah he's, JP. he's here, JP. All right, it's not the Justice yeah. of the Peace. Okay, Jim yeah, Peace. Right. We found access. We can't get the monitor to work, so we're going to just be using the small screen so that you can give us some tips. That's fine. Okay. okay, do we have tuner has not been set up? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, 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 right. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, Jim, is there anybody who has any public comment or shall we? No, go ahead. We'll go ahead. Okay. Jump <laughs> jump in anytime you want. Okay. We did two. Um, read and review the minutes of 517, 607, and 614. Whoops, I'm gonna get these out. I actually got them all and I read them. I couldn't load them, so I <laughs> still can. Um, I tried it home. Are you, are you right going here. through your email or are you going through the website? I'm going through the email. I'll go like this. Bring it up. It won't let me do anything. I click on them. Oh, no, there it came up, but it won't let me do it for this one here. Huh. Okay. So have enough of us read them to move in the, and approve them? You have, we have Okay. All right. We'll have to. Let's, yeah, if, you, if you're having trouble through email, they're all they're on the website. Unless you want to trust Chastity and I, but I guess that isn't three, so we gotta okay. It's okay. We defer, so. All righty. Nah. I'll take that. Okay. I don't have to print them all out again next time though. <laughs> all right. We next we have to um appoint uh Moyle uh, County Planning Commission town representative and a uh, TAC representative. And we've been, if you're watching Front Porch Forum, Ron's being good. We're putting lots of stuff out of there, letting people know that we're looking for, for interested parties. And um, Ron was stampeded by the number of people that 
sent letters in, right, Ron? <laughs> okay. um, yeah, we have two for two spots. Right. So uh, when I see Gregory pause, I go, oh, no, it's Greg. Uh, so Greg pa pause is, uh, is happy to do it for two years. And uh, Richard Pearson for the, uh, the uh, TAC group. So I need a motion to appoint those two, and then do we all have to sign them, or can I just sign them on? Uh, it depends how many spaces there are. I can't remember. <laughs> there, you have so many things to sign it. I, I know it. That's right. Okay, yeah, so I need five, two, five, or four. Who was the tag person? Richard Pierce. Richard Pierce. Yeah. 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 Okay. So need a motion to approve those two. So second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. First for Maria Summer. There you go. There's one to sign. Um the uh the assignment of the 2021 unspent budgeted items. Um, Ron, you wanna? Sure, okay, it's three, three requests and <clears throat> on the staff number five, color purchases to move from FY21 to FY22 for fall 21, purchasing of 28,900. Uh, line striping, which is the double yellow center line on class threes for this fall, $6,000. And that's also the class two of the job I complete. Mm -hmm. And the third one is $6,600 for Certification tools, Jaws of Life, more commonly referred to, and six thousand dollars for truck repairs. So there's two for highway, two for bike. Uh, Just want to mention about the uh, striping here. The work we had done um, last year. You mean the part where it blew all over the road? That, that's another one. Yeah, oh. Thank you. <laughs> um, but the uh, line stripes were put on there by the corner of. Uh, um, Battle Row, and we go up to the Bud Lock up that way, like that. Uh, that okay, section okay. there where, where the FEMA money was spent there, so the lines have been dug on often. It's only been a year. Yeah, new pavement. So, what will happen is you have two, three choices with lines right here. First choice is you have brand new porous asphalt, which is what Battle Row was, will last. Second and third application, you start to build up that double yellow, it'll last longer. That's one choice. The other choice is to hit it harder or do it twice almost. You can tell them how much paint put down. So that is another choice. Mm -hmm. When we just did standard, right? So that didn't last, like you're saying. The third choice are those inset uh, plastic stripes, yeah. which I think they yeah. use the bypass. Mm -hmm. Not if they're installed. Right? Okay. You have to install them and they cut through, which creates a little bit of problems to collect water too. So you have to have build up to the top so it doesn't collect water. But those last a long time. Those are a lot of us get them for the last a long time. So what we what we're planning on doing is you'll see the difference between a well, like let's say we did center road. We pave it and then the state comes by or we have to pave it. It won't last right off. The, the type type three pavement we use is meant to be a little porous so it actually doesn't catch in all those fruit jet. That's not that expensive either. So you have to deal with that seasonal problem until the paint builds up. So unless the board wants to try a different application, which is a different cost, then we have to deal with that quick fade if you want to call it that. And that's why we do it every year. How many times does it take of the cheap? The less or, expensive. To, 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 yeah, yeah, less expensive. <laughs> and, and then to how many does it by that before you, you put on one that's gonna last for a period of time? Are we paying more or less? We don't expect more than two years because what happens is you you might get away with that third 
application staying for most of the year, but you're going to have paint spots. Usually, like corners where the plows dig in a little bit harder. You'll see it, or cars drive over. Well, oh, I've that. seen it. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, so that's where that's where your fate is forcing the quick return around to pull up. Don't really do the piece of job that doesn't work that way. Plus, the reflectivity is another piece that fades pretty quickly from allowing it in. So, I, our I'm plan, yeah, our initial plan was every other year to do all the class trees after you have that base built into the pavement. Oh, and then it's like an upkeep. It's hard to regulate maintenance plan. So, yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the risk with any of this maintenance stuff. If you have a, a higher level of maintenance, Dave knows all about sand on, in the winter, right? The more you put on, some people love it. They want to keep it up high. And all of a sudden, there's a that's too costly. We got to dial back, and then you run against the pushback from people that want more. Right. So the double yellow is in that category. If you, if you get it down, people expect it to be in good condition. Good. And if it starts fading and coming every other year, definitely every other year get full. So you're saying it's cost effective to do the one every other year, right? If you get ninety. 80% coverage of good supply striking all year long. It's like you take start to lose those corners. So you don't have to be, you could be, you could do it more. I think you could do it annually because you'll have those little spots starting. But like that is probably a way to put it. Yeah. Unnecessary. Yeah. 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 But we'll see. You know, people will, you'll see it. We'll see it. Brad will see it. <laughs> so that's, that's where we haven't done it on every class three before. New, new thing to get it on one. So, Mark will get a contract, schedule it for fall, be good for the winter, and then you'll see the differences next year. Next as year. Okay. Ho hopefully, it's going to make it through next year. Okay. Does that work for you, Brian? Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys. Okay. Um, and a lot of this, it's like the culvert purchase. It's like the supplies just don't exist. It's sort of as everything just got backed up. So, it's just I think if it had been around, you would have purchased it, but it just you but, can't. Yeah, the line striping actually ran into a national paint uh, deficiency. So they were actually having no paint, except for the state of Vermont, which pre-bought a whole bunch of it. Yeah. The municipalities couldn't get it. So I think that's going to come back. Most of the construction stuff I've heard is like two or three more month, maybe delay, and then things will start to get back next year. So we'd be able, we should be able to call any supplier and get stuff within it. Not too many people do stockpiles anymore, but right. yeah. it comes from the yeah. factory to your customer more so these days. Yeah. And that delay is five, six months right now. It's well, supposed to, things are kind of hard to get. It's supposed to come down at the end of this calendar year. It doesn't have yeah. dates project, but, okay. but how's your been the cost of all the materials and everything? Too much. <laughs> I like that. We, 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 we locked in the prices. Okay. Before uh, but the stuff we didn't lock in, like like the four all order to go from the meter box to the house, was a dollar seventy four cents a foot. Not a good price, but the conduit was just a thousand dollars to go from the meter box to the house. Where, where it generally runs about twelve or thirteen dollars for a ten foot stick with thirty nine dollars, and, and a lot of it. There's some shortage, but a lot of it is riding the wave. Sure. Okay. So. Anything on fire? Yeah. Did you hear what I said? Uh, we came in. We were talking about. We were just talking about signing uh, the unspent funds. Oh, uh, your two requests for twenty-two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do we have a jaws of life? We do. It's twenty, <laughs> almost twenty-two years old now. And so the last three years, we haven't been able to get service because they don't wait for us to work anymore. Okay. So what I was thinking is going to the battery operated stuff um, and buying one piece at a time so that we can afford it instead of coming in and saying, hey, I need $60,000 for this equipment. You know, I figured if I have money left over from this year's budget, we'll take that and start piecing it together and keep that jaws that we have right now um because the piece i'm looking for right now is just a tummy tool so it has a small spreader and plus a small cutter on um so you can actually do two jobs with one tool 
Um, and if we need a bigger cutter, we can still, unless it's a newer made car, um, and then we're going to have the problem where um, we probably won't be able to cut the carbon steel that's in the A and B post there to the windshield and the doors there because a lot of departments are finding that with these new manufacturers, well, not the new manufacturers, but with them building the cars stronger, the older type jaws will not cut through okay. and break the tools. You know, so I don't want to do that because if we have a character where we can still use you know, the older older ones instead of breaking it and then it's not worth nothing. What I'm hoping we can do is once we get a couple of battery operated ones, we can hopefully try to sell it and make a little money for the town off it. You know, it's the unit looks almost brand new. You know, you wouldn't know it was 21, 22 years old. Okay, right. You know, because don't use them. Luckily, often, right? luckily, we don't use them yeah. as much as we used to. You know, um, but um, and what I'm thinking too is if we do get into a newer car, other area departments around us have it. So okay, that's what I was going to ask. At least we can start working. Yeah. To try to help the patient, you know, and save less time. You know, because if we have to help the Johnson or right more so or North Park, you know, it's by the time we get there. There's 15, 20 minutes, you know, and usually in the EMS, they say the golden hour, you know. So if we wait to get on scene 15, 20 minutes, and then we call another department, maybe another 15, 20 minutes before they get there, you know, so at least we can yeah, be doing something. Yeah. You know? yeah. Now, now, your existing jobs you got now, you get a fire with the generator. We do. So if you've got a car down over my anchor, we, we have 150 feet of holes yeah, with a battery. You wouldn't have to. You, you, yeah, um, a couple of weeks ago we did a demo for the uh, pet center health class there. I see it. You did it with the station. Yeah, yeah. I see yeah. it. Okay, cool. um, this is the second year that we've done it. Um, the tech center does a health class and they do an EMR. Okay. Yeah. First responder class for them, and they get certified. So part of that is um, auto education in that. So the last couple of years we. Volunteer to show their the students okay. what it's like, yeah. and that way they get used to yeah. you know if they do decide to get into the EMS field, they're not blindsided once they draw a service. You know they know kind of what to right, do right, get an idea of yeah. You know, so you know, and part of the other money is like who knows what fuel prices are going to be. You know, I don't remember what we put in for the budget. You know, but I figure if we take some of that and save it for fuel and Heat and oil, and that um, hopefully we don't have to overspend. Yeah, that was a question I had for you. So, on your email, I got up then $6,600 for an extrication tool. Yeah, um, start picking that. Yeah, so what I did, uh, I had some free time this morning before we went to our fire, um, and I went through what Allie has on the website. Yeah, there, and uh, there was a few items that we did over extend like electricity um this year we were way over for some well i think we got that figured out now um our air compressor there that runs the air for the fire truck that we need to keep plugged in for the last two months we've unplugged it and left it unplugged it will plug it into the truck to build the air up and we have a call instead of leaving it 24 7 and the electricity bills drop for a lot of us with a lot of things you know yeah, yeah. Yeah, not that big change all these trucks they all have all three of them are, are air so in a lot of times the trucks will leak air especially for tender two you know that's 20 21 22 years old you know so but, um we can charge the air tank tonight tomorrow morning it's right in the you know, so, okay. So about the on hooking that and disconnecting that, you know, I think I'm running. We brought it from three or four hundred dollars to this wallet to hundred eighty nine dollars. I could make a big thank you. Sixty probably sixty dollars. Sixty dollars. Yeah, sixty dollars. <clears throat> it might be advantageous to go with an eighty gallon. It'll have more storage. It won't kick on so often. Right. Kick off that type of thing. Air pressure is new enough where, so like when we shut it off, that tank holds the air still. There's no leaks in the system. So when we have a call, we just come in. The first guy there just goes 
in terms of what, what trucks we're going to be using. And by the time the rest of the firefighters get there, the tank's all built up and we can take it ready. Huh. So, uh, okay. The specific question on assignments is not to save everything that's on site. Right. No. But to have specific projects with specific so, dollar amounts. Yeah. So, in which I did did that. Um, so, the battery robbery tool, um, that's about 80, it's going to be about $8,900 for that county. Okay. So, that all when I was trying to figure out your dollars <laughs> before you figure, uh, we were looking at the unspent money in tools. Yeah, and yeah, then you would come and say, "Well, I got eighty nine hundred unspent. Can I use it next year?" Yeah. So I did. I'm just making sure that we don't. We shouldn't be going on each line item necessarily, but pick pick the ones that are really going to benefit the town by not losing the money. Yeah. Okay. Fuels kind of a projection thing. You know, but yeah. in the, for the purposes of assignment, you want to have a project that you know that you okay. pretty much know you're going to do, yeah. and you know what the dollar amount is, and the board can say yes or no. If you say no, the money stays in the general fund unassigned balance. Right. Gone, sort of gone from the fire department. Well, right, it's gone from the fire department, but there. if something came up in the fire department and they need it, then you can come to the select board right. and say, oh, yeah. Well, you have two options there. You can go to the reserve. Right. Or you can go to the voters and take some of the unassigned and assign it by vote by the voters. So you have two options yeah. other than this yeah. particular. Yeah. You know, and the reason why, you know, I figured instead of if we have money on spend, <clears throat> instead of dipping into the reserve fund that we have, you know, save right. that for something that an emergency where, where, we, where we, we do need it, you know, if I have money left over, you know. Get that tool or whatever. So for the minute, you're going to say 89 for the extrication tool. Yeah. And then I also had uh, 6,000 for truck repairs. Yeah. Um, because uh, two weeks ago now, I think it was, we had our in pump testing done on both of our pumpers and they both failed. <laughs> okay. Um, engine one, that's the newest international, I think it's 2010. Mm -hmm. So, um, it has a small leak in the pump where it's leaking. Um, they don't think it's going to be that bad to fix. But the problem with that truck, they switched to all electronics. So we have an electronic keypad on the side that will raise our RPMs up and all that. And it passed the first phase of the pump test, but that computer system won't allow us over 1900 RPMs. So that computer system is messed up. So we're going to have to replace. That computer system on that truck, and I don't know what it's going to cost yet. Um, the company, the company that I'm looking into, um, they're out of New Hampshire, and uh, they're actually coming up to do some work on Morsel Fire and Worcester Fire. So what I'm hoping I can do is I can get a board with them and have them take a look and see what it's going to cost and that you get it fixed and I won't have to pay for a whole travel fee from the three departments to split the course of the travel. So trying I'm trying to save money. Yeah, well, you know, so. appreciate that. That's so right as of right now going on in the engine two, the older one, the, yeah. uh, that has a fairly good size leak in it. I don't know what that's gonna be. So you know where it's leaking from? Yeah. The pump again or yes, yeah, leaking from the pump. Um, there's I mean I can't remember what the name of the house it is, but it's coming right out of that. And there's gears and all that behind that. So I'm hoping that can be rebuilt or be yeah, or you have to price the rebuilt versus a new one. They said they definitely could fix it versus put a brand new pump on it. So yeah. okay. Um so as of right now, I'm not looking at the replacement of the pump there. Um, I got truck repairs, so it kind of covers. <laughs> so right. for, the, for the assignment yeah, purposes, it would be truck repairs. Yeah, and you're just you're justifying the dollar amount of six thousand. Right. Yeah, so that's how that generally works. If you're comfortable with that specific truck repair six thousand, then that goes in the motion to reserve that money for 
for that purpose, even though it's not exactly pump one, pump two, repair, you know, 6,000 right. should be used. Yeah. So it doesn't go again. Right. Yeah. From which now we use the first money. Yeah. Uh, no, that's right. Okay. And that. Assign that money to. Is there, was okay. there a third purpose? I know you mentioned fuel, but I don't, that's not really something that I would not. Yeah. Not, not, fuel is just not the, the biggest yeah, tool or the, uh, the combi tool and the um, rolling over money over to the truck maintenance to help with the cost of okay. the okay. pumps. Everything else, not on wood. So the batteries for those are charged right on the truck? Yes. Yeah. So uh, so what they are is that they're uh, like a regular Milwaukee mm -hmm. battery that runs the tools there. Mm -hmm. um, and so what they'll do, um, I've been at this guy, he's been looking to get our business for a while there. And so I've got him to throw in four batteries, a charging unit. And uh, that unit is um, guaranteed for life. So if that fuel oh. system in it goes bad, he goes down to mm -hmm. his new lease unit, and then he sends that in, and they send us a brand new one there. So that tool is 100, you know, unless we drop it or something oh, wait, wait, where, where it stops from us. But if it's regular manufacturer failure there, they, they come up. And that's the bigger batteries that they use now, the, or are those the smaller 18? It, yeah, the 18 volt ones yeah. there, I think it's 8.0 or something now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's the regular, you know, so it, so, so when they, use, when they go back, we can just go to the hardware store and buy it in. So they're regular batteries, you know, it's not something special. Yeah. You know, so, so yeah. So. Okay. So, Ron, we need a motion to do. Yeah, the numbers I have is a motion to assign $8,900 uh, fire for fire extrication tools, 6000 for fire truck repairs, uh, 6000 for double yellow. Center line paint and 28,900 culverts. Okay. So moved. Got a second down there? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Now, while we have Brad here, do you have any more questions for him? Is there anything else? You haven't got two, Brad. The uh, last time you were here, you were going to give me a copy of uh, the uh, fire calls and the training calls and the, the roster. Um, yep. Um, yeah, we got all of it. So, the, this year's fire calls? Yes, your fire calls and, and the roster will show up the calls, also the meetings, please. Okay. So, you want each individual call? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I can, I can definitely. And, and who showed up for the calls? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Well, who was up front and off? Yep. Yeah. One run for him, sir. Yep. Yeah. I'm not sure who, who came and that. Yep. Yeah. Same with the training. Yep. Yeah. There. And, and also, uh, any action on 911 signs yet this summer? Um, so we've we're just waiting for this year's budget to start because what we've done last year, we already had to spend, we only have like $300 left. Yeah. So we're just waiting. For the new budgets coming in fact, as soon as that comes in, I've got an order already for um the prison there where we have is it Newport? Newport right? yeah. 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 Um so as soon as July 1st comes in the new budget comes in, I'll be sending them guys a email on what we need and it's usually a couple of weeks and and uh, we've taken the fourth Thursday off. For trainings this summer, yeah. So, what we're going to do is we're still going to meet, but we're going to do the 91 signs oh. oh. now. After the after this summer, what percentage of the towns done? Um, the only thing that would be left is the village. And what my goal is this year to be able to finish the rest of the North High Park Road down into Perry Street and uh. That little development that Robert lives in down there yeah, off right, okay. by Keith Lumber. Yeah. Um, finish that one and McKinstry Hill and all of Center Road. And then, so it would leave us, if we can get all that done this year, it would leave the village and the garden there left. Yeah. Okay. There. And, uh, oh, so. Yeah. So, yeah. So, 
80, 90, that's 85, 80 percent. Yeah, basically. After the once show. we get into the yeah. yeah. the village is going to be yeah. working around how to walk. You know, so, um, right, but they're good. close. Folder for a year from now, we begin, need to begin well, having conversations yeah. in our village. We have a village about the same time, what they want to do with their street signs. So, if you go to the corner of Church of Maine, it's almost not readable right now. They did not want the six inch standard green reflective ones like you see it. So, right. you say they're too big. <laughs> they, I, mean, I think that it's the same kind of impact. You have this, you know, church street right. sign right. hanging out at Main Street that looks like it should be. Right. Well, I think the more so ones, the brown, the yeah, they, I they, like that they one. said that they would be working eight years ago now on a design for their street signs. Yeah. They had seen them proposed. So that I told Mark not to do the village street sign until they yeah, gotcha. but, but we're way behind now. And that's gonna be one of the finishing touches okay. for Church of Maine if we were doing yeah. all the sidewalks that tuned up. Is going to be the street signs, yeah. but it's the same impact. If you put all yeah. new street signs and all new 901 signs, you won't, you won't be in a historic village of being signed yeah. though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're just right. That would, sure. that would truly be obnoxious, which is, you know, as we're trying to go the other way and have a nice aesthetic. It's like, I wonder how many other towns get a trip street that don't have a trip time. Probably a lot of them. I would say a lot of them. That don't have a trip time. Yeah. It's just so you have a main street, a church street, and a school street. Just sort of when oh. you lay it out, whether oh. you have them or not. <laughs> Is Jonathan your church street? Okay. Yes, that's good. Can I ask a question yeah. about the sign? Mm -hmm. I'm on a private road, but you're doing private roads too, right? Okay. Yep. I assume by a little chat. Yep, no worries. Yep, everybody gets done. Some people don't like it because they say they're on private road. I want it so you can find me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you can tell us that. I don't know. UPS and FedEx and everybody else. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And usually after I talk to them, one of the firefighters in there, we explain why. And, and they go, oh, yeah. Okay, sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And I can answer one of your questions now, Dave. Um, okay. We have 15 people on our roster. 15. Yeah. That more or less than that's less. That's less. Well, a lot less. Yeah. Um, because um our um, bylaws and our SLGs um I'm following regular T and uh the ones 
the way I look at it is that if they're not growing up, they're no good to us, you know. So, it, you know, when I kind of talk with the ones there, and uh, and there's one guy that says, Can I take a few months off because he's in the process of starting his own business? I said, Absolutely, at least you, you got to yeah. communicate with me, you know. So, right. I mean, yeah. what's going on. Sure. Because, yeah. right. Right. you know, <laughs> you showed up to one call last year, you know, and the, and the other guy never showed up to one for those six months, you know, and I said, you know, what, what's your goal? You know, I said, I, I, I'm glad that you want to volunteer, but you're not helping me help on this, right. you know, so, right. so I'm. But you get the same issue with the fast one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You might remind Gary. Well, you I, I think I'll I'm having the same problem in this. Yeah. I have two full time openings up there and, and I can't get in the way to advertise. Ethics Rescue right now, they got four full time openings. Jeez, that's scary. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. nobody nobody wants to do anything. Why would they? Yeah. You know, and oh, I was talking to, stay home. Right. I was talking to Danny there, Morris's fire chief. I think he has a roster of 18 people right now, and their full roster would be 42. Wow. Well, sure you can handle all your equipment in Morrisville with not with that. Not well, you can't, but you're finding a lot, you're finding all sorts of things are, are like this. And I, I, I don't think it's people being paid to stay at home. I think it's a lot of people who are just jobs, people just aren't. In the past year, a lot of people done a lot of assessment. But I don't, I don't, I don't need to do, I don't need to do that. It's true. Yeah. yeah. And I don't, I don't think it's just a Vermont issue. I think we're yes. finding it all. all over. You know, I think we're, I think we're finding it all over the place. So but with a short, when you don't have, well, you're not having a lot of people show up. You just call them out of town to help. That's yeah, what's happening. Cool. You guys are just well, great today. today. I wonder. Um, yeah, we went as far as snow. Did you? Um, we reached out to Cambridge. Um, at first, they couldn't supply us anybody, and then about an hour later, they had three people available. So we had them come up and backfill in Johnson Station. But we had us, uh, North Bay Park, Morrisville, Snow, Johnson, there. You know, and it wasn't a very big house, but it was a, the temperature were hot, so we were going yeah, through. Yeah. Did you lose the house? Oh, yeah, it's total loss, unfortunately. But, yeah, um, you know, and Johnson used to be the department to call for manpower, right. you know, and even them guys are hurt. Yeah. You know. What do you think the fix is for it? Yeah. Don't say it. I'm, I'm not a. We don't know. I'm not, 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 not Chief Webster said. Yeah, he's on the right a while ago. I'm not a firefighter, but I tell you what, I know the answer is because being be an employer of many firefighters at Bar yeah. High Park, you knew that, is these guys are getting done because they've got a life besides the fire department. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and when you go to 20 calls a, a year or whatever, 50 calls a year, they're more than welcome to do that. They're more than welcome to. The, the employers are more than welcome to let the guys go to help it. But when you've got to spend every freaking weekend and two nights a week training just so you can do that, they're saying, they're saying you're not having yeah, That's one of the things, you know, like to be state certified part of one part of two. Um, now that part of one class is over 200 something hours to get okay. certified, you know, and we used to have that in there. Yeah, so these, yeah. they're, um, if you want this to is for volunteering. Yeah. yeah. Um, so um, we we said no. Um, so the county, what we've done a couple, 10 years ago, we started the old, we call it 45 hour class, where it teaches new firefighters the basics, you know, um, that way, you know, we'll show them the ladders, run how to handle holes, gear packs, just the general basics, you know, um, because the state, you know, I like the state and everything um, and that, but they get so much in detail and a lot of it is pointed towards the career. Where it's mm -hmm. not well, sure, right. Or it's well, right. somebody in Burlington yeah. or somebody. Yeah, absolutely, it is. Five fires in the year. Yeah. Right. You know, um, yeah. And so the majority of the parents have now said, you know, once in a while, if we have a class around the county, you know, some of the firefighters are sure, going we'll go, right. to get the extra yeah. You know, I have one guy right now. He's been born, I think it's every Wednesday and almost every weekend. Like last weekend, he was all the way down Pittsburgh there mm -hmm. doing one of their live trains, you know. You know, and nowadays, 
You can't yeah. ask somebody to do that. You know, you know another thing but on, on the employer side of it, where the employers are, begin to say, no, 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 you can't go, is because years ago, a firefighter was a firefighter. Now you're a traffic director, you're a lift assist person, you're, you're uh, uh, drugs. Yep. And anything, any agency needs help, the fire department is the go-to person. Yeah, we're, we're, more, we're, more, we're more of emergency services right now. Not just the fire. Yeah, right. yeah. You know, so when that tone goes off, it's the true. firefighters right. expect to go. And the employers are saying, well, we're working to see the Yeah. 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 You know, and, and, and really yeah, all my, my firefighters, you know, I said, if your employers are saying no, it's not a problem. You know, yeah. Yeah. you know. That's your full time job. That's the one is supporting your family. Right now. Can employers say no? Yeah, yeah they can. Yeah. 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 A few years ago, the state tried to pass a law where they tried to do that. And luckily, it didn't. I think if that law would have passed, it would have hurt the fire department. Oh, yeah. Rescue yeah. services, not just fire, yeah. but rescue. Yeah, a lot. Even yeah. 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 Lot yeah. All the volunteer yeah. services, right? Yeah. 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 right? Because, you know, the state would have said, yes, the fire department or rescue. People can leave, you know, it's leaving the employers hot and dry, yeah. and yeah. they got a business to run. We, we, we always say the structure fire your job. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you were great, you know, yeah. like when I first started the online park, you were my boss. You know, yeah. Yeah. The, the small, <laughs> small raisin on that I call them. Um, yeah. No. Yeah. You know, and I was absolutely fine with it, you know, yeah. because yeah. They don't, you don't need 100. You know, you need all the help you can, you know, a lift assist, two or three people can handle that or whatever, or a cat stuck in, up in a tree or, or whatever, you know, you don't need the whole department yeah. there. Yeah. You know. So Brad, what's the vision for the future? What I want to start doing is we have a high school right here. In our yeah, hotel. I was just going to say that young um, I want to see if I can get some of the younger blood yep. more involved with us. Good idea. You know, yeah. And, you know, and by doing that, you know, it's not just a high part, you know, it's going to benefit Cambridge sure, and, right. yeah. and yeah. all these other towns too, you know. So if they don't live in high part, all these other towns, they still offer cadet or a fire program, you know. And the way I look at it is if we take three or four years and start working with these, you know, and yeah, there's certain things they can't do. But we can train them when they hit 18, they got pretty good knowledge. Yeah, yeah. You know, and what and the commitment is yeah. and what they what they yeah, yeah, right. would they be enough interest where that could go into a vocational class. Yeah. I would love to see that, but I don't think we can get that down here. Newport, and the reason why I say that is Newport used to have one up there, and now that program is gone. Um St. Albans area, uh, where the DFA yeah, yeah. there, um, they have one. I think this year's class, I think they had eight to 10, 10 students. Um, so, oh, that's something. Right? Yeah, exactly. You know, so, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I don't mind all of I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I've been thinking about getting some posters made and putting them up uh, along Group 15, saying, hey, we're really looking for help, you know, and that, I just, I don't know. It's just getting worse. How yeah. old can you be to be a junior fire at this age? Uh, ours is 14. Oh, you can do it first. Yeah. 14 to 16 is we have junior and cadet. I know it's getting mixed up. Okay. So one age is either cadet or junior, and then the other one from 16 to 17 so is the other one. Gotcha. And once they turn 18, then they can put an application in for a regular fire. Because very limited, they can't go back to fire. Right. right. Well, they, they can come to fire calls, right? Um, uh, but they can't they, walk, they can walk. yeah, they can walk. Um so Basically, the, the, they're good for us to help us go get stuff from the trucks and burn. Sure. Um, they can't go into a burning building. Um, um, they can't climb a ladder. Um, no um, hand tools or anything like that. Um, so, and the ones that. Yeah, but they're going to find out real fast if they're interested. Right. You know, it's you're going to pique their interest and they're going to be really into I have nephews, right? Um, yeah. And, uh, I thought he was going to die before he became 18. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, that, that good control and stuff. Marketing, they don't have to do this yeah. of age. So, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay, we need to get because we yes. have a lot of stuff to do. Yeah, but you guys are no, 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 that was yeah. No, no, we're great. Thank Almost you. More stories. Let us <laughs> let us know how the education <laughs> aspect is yeah. going. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Or well, and can you come in another time? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I definitely, that's great. I definitely plan on coming in. Yeah, sitting in some yeah. of the meetings there yeah. and all. Yep. Like I said before, you know, if you have questions and that, yep. don't have wrong hesitate to get a hold of me and I'll make sure. Here. If I help us i mean share the hurdles that you're because we did i mean there's plenty of minds here too yep. and maybe we can help you out yeah and if you guys think something um, sure. right here how to get some fresh blood right um, reach out to me um, yep. i'm not to any ideas yep. yep okay so i think the key thing is communication what you just yep. talked about yep. and being here and then let us know what your yep. issues are and yep. we'll try to help you yeah, because that was my number one yeah. thing right there. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I give you a call. Communication okay. is a big thing between us, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's all. And as long as I'm in this role, you know, you might get sick of listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're even, at least you're getting all what's going on. You're hearing, we, we want to hear from you. Yeah, so, right? yeah. yeah. So, appreciate it. Yeah, it, it, like I said, same thing. You know, if you guys have something, don't hesitate. My phone will work for you. July 19th. <laughs> That's the next one. I will be here. <laughs> thank okay. you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you for your service and yeah. your willingness yeah. to lead. Well, and your energy. That's great. Thank you. Yep. 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 I'll have some questions for you next meeting day. Okay. Yeah. No, no. I'll get the questions. You'll have the answers. <laughs> 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 and it's also now you know you're looking for equipment. Now you're looking for a reasonable number of equipment. Then the last time we came through, if you got 30 people on the roster and we need 30 sets of no, you don't. Mm -hmm. How many people are actually working? 15. Okay. <clears throat> think I'm headed? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Our favorite topic: excavators. <laughs> how are we? How are we doing on excavators? How are we doing on the matrix? Yeah. It all filled. Yeah. All the voids filled? No. So what I found doing the exercise of the matrix, which is not uncommon, is that I wanted to provide the summary to the board. So that's has some unknowns in there. But also asked for some direction. So of those six vehicles, they all are proving to be somewhat difficult to compare because everybody has a little tweak. With different sizes, different length, that different uh, manufacturer of the bucket system. It's all over the place. So it would help. This is, I talked to Mark about this today. See if this is interesting. Him. Can we as a narrow that? Can we can we get right. down to maybe the top three? Two, three, right? Send the crew and Ryan up to go try them and see if they like how the gears are running and have a little field trip and then. If all three are still in the running, maybe then drill into the all the spec sheets for what you want. Because it, I don't think it was going to it didn't appear that running the spec sheets were going to make any one of those rise to the top. They were looking very much in the same ballpark, except for things like, do you want the guide bucket system only? Will you accept the cat handler bucket system? I have no clue. I don't know. I don't really equipment, but they were not offering the guide. So it was caterpillar out. So that, that was my, I didn't want to spend a lot of time drilling into the discrepancies. Right. And then finding out the board was perfectly fine with either or caterpillar buckets because then, then caterpillar's still in on that one. All the pricing is within the ballpark. The financing is within the ballpark. You're talking about five, 10, $15,000 difference. So pricing was not like a tip. Somebody wasn't doing 250 and 150. It was, you know, 165 to 213 or something, whatever the range was. Uh, the trailer, I think, is a standalone. I don't know if you and yeah, we, Mark talked about that, but we, we yeah, you know, we're, that's something we're going to still have to address and hasn't really been dealt with. It'll be a separate. Yeah. That, that seems to be here. Yeah, how many different parts of the trailer you have to worry about? Right? It's just got to yeah. hold the weight of the yeah, trailer. So, and we can't do that until we figure out how much weight yeah, the, so, the, the machine's going to be. <laughs> so that would actually be a pretty competitive little prototype process to add on to. The financing piece we talked about as well, that's running from 7,500 to 15 or almost 25,000 on a longer term one. So you got to be careful with those. Uh, 
if you go more than five years term, then you're supposed to get voter approval for those. So if you want to go under five years and use five years, which you do for fire trucks as well, uh, divide whatever you don't want to put down for a down payment, you have $160,000 next year. So capital fund without any new purchases next year. So you could use all of that, some of it. I don't know. You're running into a probably greater coming up in the future. That's my that's my concern. The greater is going to be over 400 probably, and we're not going to make it. And next year we need a new truck too, but that's already got one truck for the next year. We got to order that soon. Yeah, that's yeah. Mark was told me I'll let you guys deal with that order. It's it's a it's a question of do you order from the state contract and just get it moving international because international has a state contract. Or do you go the same thing type of process? And I can, we always seem to end up with international being close enough for us kind of thing. Roland would know a lot about the yeah. bidding process and stuff. I wish he was here for that. Yeah. So the state bids are a replacement. Because they do their own bid process for the town bid process. So that's right. an option right. you guys run to your policies. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's like, actually there's national companies that do the same thing for towns. They take a big chunk of they'll go out to all the manufacturers and have a list of pre-approved low bid for a certain period of time. Yeah. So it's a couple of national okay, same thing. Yeah, that, 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 which is that's but not it's not always the best deal because no. you, I've I've done a lot of state bids. It's who knows who. And if somebody wants this certain, let's say a lift, somebody wants this, this certain brand of lift. And it's the third one. And all I've got to do is put in something on that lift that the other person does not have, like a, a LED, underneath LED lights. And everybody else is over the bid process, and that one person will get it. Yeah. So that's that state works in. Yeah. Well, it was interesting. I had a long conversation with the, the Caterpillar sales guy, and, and it was along the lines of territory. So basically, you want you did that. So we want the best deal possible on a Caterpillar excavator. Yeah. So what do you do? You call the territorial company that sells the stuff, which is Richmond's Milford County. And they said, okay, so now we you know one person that can serve you with the Caterpillar brand. What do you do for bid, bidding? You're left to the state bid, dealing with that vendor, or going to Louisiana or California and trying to find another, but they won't be able to give you the it's discount. Sure. No, the it's discount. It's gonna, oh. They won't be able to give you the it's discount it's because the only thing is the discount yeah, applies to the territory that the town's in. I'd like to see if somebody tries to say, it's not $20,000, I don't get that run of this. Cause, cause I might be in the minority, but I feel a 28,000 pound machine way, way overkill for this town. Yeah, they're all right, 28 to 33 ish, somewhere in there, about 5,000 pound range. Yeah, no. and, and well, somewhere yeah. between a 15 to 18,000 dollar, about 15,000 pound, to me, would be financially more feasible to do. And it's going to be a hell of a lot easier to, 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 to travel because you don't need a triaxle trailer to do it like you would. Yeah, we'd have to fit up a Ryan's truck was, yeah. was picked out as the pollen truck. But you, yeah, then you can tie that truck up. The other one, you can hook onto your tongue truck. Right? I, think, I think, though, I think we decided we need the larger one, right? I mean, that certainly seems to be for the work that's going to be done. I, I don't I don't want to keep hashing over the size out over the size when it seemed pretty clear to me that Mark and crew and you and and Rolly and Chastity, you know about I know nothing about these things. I'm just saying, okay, let's keep this moving. That that they everybody agrees that it's the larger size. You are the person out on this one. Yeah. That you know. I think 33 is way too big. Right? One of them was getting up there. Now, you know, I got another question. I look at all the bids and how come your local taxpayer never got a chance to bid on this piece of stuff? You mean put it to a vote for them? Huh? You mean put it to a vote? No, how about Pete? How come Pete Reynolds didn't get a, a, a chance to There was no response from this. But we did, they, they went they back went out, out and they went to, what were the two of the it's on your spreadsheet and the matrix? There's yeah. a couple of them that didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> you have no response. So yeah. really, that's an option for it. Do they have them in the Well, they've always got equipment coming and going, whether they have one on in 
stock or whatever. They got that other place up on oh, the right. hill there, yeah, yeah. That they can. So that's why their choice. Yeah. Yeah. And the public that tied it in and not give never. It was, it was, it was, it was told all before. The other one was what cat? What was it? Cat. Yeah, yeah, cat was the other one. The cat responded. They the funded yeah. it. Oh, okay. yeah. they didn't originally. Yeah. Yeah, the cat and the uh, door tracks are on the 33 side. The the Kamatsu is 34. So they're all up. They're all up there. They're, and I don't know if they if they have a 28,000 pound option. You know, I don't know that much about their figures. In that spreadsheet, that uh, 2018 Kamatsu. Um, what were the hours on that? It was new. No, no, there's one right Didn't here. That he says, sell uh, that Didn't that he sell that though? Did he sell that meeting? Yeah, that yeah, yeah. was sold. Yeah, that was sold. That one sold? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. he, yeah, I thought he said that was the meeting. Yeah, yeah. 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 he was up on the big screen. He said yeah. just like that day and sold it. Yeah, that afternoon. Yeah, everything else that was used or older right. is it's gone. not, no, no offers. So that there was a huge, uh, 2020 Volvo that had no offers. And the 21 Volvo that was gone. Those are the two Volvos. I think that was Roland's recommendation. I think he was here last week. He, he, he mentioned Volvo. He, he was all yeah. about Volvo. Exactly. I think that's what he ran in Morris. But the heck, yeah. So to go from here, but like Ryan, you and Mark, and they figure out a couple of them that look like they're in the size you want and go, go it makes sense to go visit them first. I mean, if some of these are just too big, then you can eliminate them because they're just too big. Yeah, I don't know what you feel. Like the, what they say is like when you get out of sight with a 28 or maybe a 18 or 20, which is like a third, third smaller, right? Do they feel like they can maneuver that thing? You know, if you get something too big, you can't give your block lanes, you know, right. actually. I don't know where a 30. The, the, the one thing that was discussed in that, and it was on the matrix, is a zero turn. Right. And uh, yeah. so that means that it would stay hopefully within the lane. But again, every time you jump up and, and wait, you're, you're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I don't think um, you're going to get anything that big. It's going to have zero turn. It's going to stay in the lane. And what lane are you talking about? The lane on the center road or the lane on the road? Or any road. Black Fire Road. Oh, Black Fire Road. Main road. Yeah, that's, you get into the track with there. So you start talking about lane, you're talking about state, you're not talking about town highways. Yeah. Track lanes get over the 12 or 13 foot here. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not tracking. I'm piping out of it, but I'm telling you right now, but I'm going to be the first one in line to say I told you so. Okay, but that means they have to be the first one in line to to say you guys were right. Do you know what I'm about that? <laughs> but they have got a damn big, but what does he have? No, no, but to your point, would you, would you think that if the highway guys climbed in one of those and just felt it, would they have an opinion like yours to actually see the thing? Yeah, put it put it on the. I don't know if that I don't know what helps people understand what's too big or not. That's what I, mean. I don't know. That would, would it be too big for uh, North Lake Park Road? Probably not. Would it be too big for the majority of the roads in the town? Yes. Put it on Dean Road. Put it on Savota Road. Put it on the. Yeah, Tenney Hill. Any of the side roads are going to run into the width problem because you don't have twenty five, twenty four. Exactly. Right. Right. Too goddamn big to put that monster up through that. So, so what? So it seems to me what we you need to do is to get. <laughs> you have <laughs> I knew that when I was saying it. <laughs> I'm glad you did. electrical company park all over the road with no traffic control. Like, what? I didn't. Okay, sorry, he didn't. It was terrible. It's a subcontractor out there just walking the road. You had to figure out your way through these curvy roads. So we don't want that on our road. The next right. Year. Because we're we're gonna have problems with traffic control. But the talk is we're gonna have to have traffic control to control the same. Yeah, we're but the <laughs> talk with Mark and Mark and whoever I don't know, and to and and again because there's so many of them to, to take a field day and go check them and go check them out. They it's said true. that they would bring them here to let us try. Them. Well, but you don't. We're not gonna. I don't think you don't want to ask six or seven. People to do that. I mean, I don't know that. Well, that becomes the two of them are Volvo. No, they want to sell them. Anyway, yeah, oh, yeah, they want to sell them. And then when I was discussing with them, as that being part of the option, they didn't have an issue with that. Bring them up. They're going to make, you know, 100 and 
seventy thousand dollars or whatever, hundred sixty thousand uh, dollars. That's a small investment to chuck it up here to have them uh, um, okay. do it. So I think I think what what you're mentioning, I mean, like try it out, is going to be a key thing to in the decision making. Um, <clears throat> um, it's just a matter of setting up a scenario that uh, will meet like what they're saying about uh, the swing and other stuff in it, and it might determine that it might not work. Yeah, right. But it, it would seem that the reasonable thing to do would to take them all up the gravel pit. I mean, then you got plenty of space because somebody being in it, deal, you're, they're going to have an idea of what your swing is and what it is, and they can see all that. I mean, they do they do enough equipment. I disagree with you. Put, put them in places where they can't swing. That's what I was thinking too. And anybody can run anything if you can swing all the way around. Right. You put it in places that you can't run. And there's enough place up there in that gravel pit, so we could create just about any sort of. Uh, well, access we want. Yeah, it's like with the access road to get up the old thing, staying in your lane rather than the open pit. Yeah. Take, take a pit, pit, you know, pick a road, you know, and just what what that width is and that sort of thing, and use that as a scenario right. to deal. And then, and then just and, and then, and then you may prove what uh, yeah, what exactly. he's saying that uh, what we got there. Well, is, some of them feel or they don't feel or they. Whatever, because I, I I doubt if any of them have operated that kind of equipment before or much of it, so they don't have much of a feel for it. Well, so it's, it's, really it's new. It's, most of it's all new. No, yeah. my my, my friend said it might mean that everybody in it, everybody can run that escalator thing except uh, Drake and don't know about Drake, but he said Ryan can run it. Uh, Jason has, I'm sure. I was just so, yeah. Yeah, but I don't want Jason running. You will get yourself right back into the same predicament we had with Mark Lawyer. Oh, because he's on the grader. Right. Because the only person who can run equipment was Mark Lawyer. Yeah, but we, yeah. we can't run the grader and right. excavate right. at the same time. Yes. Well, right. we'll, so, yeah. we'll figure that out. <laughs> right now. Okay. So, so you want to set that up with Mark? Yeah. So the, the goal is, is to narrow it down. I heard that. I, would, I think so. Right. <clears throat> Do we and want to do that? Figure out what size we need. I mean, that's really part so of So we're going to take the matrix right and we'll go to that because we can't totally do it on price. Right. It's got to have all the stuff that was first mentioned. You know, if it's got voids and it doesn't have some of the stuff we want, then that'll eliminate one, that type of thing. And we'll we'll narrow it down by that. And then then we can go, let's say like Bobo, that's two of them right there in the lower lower range or the lower. Range because right. we can't uh, two eight, 2018 is no longer uh, an option. So basically, it's Camacho, Volvo, and Case. If you're if you're talking finance, but again, like I said, if a Caterpillar for some reason has all the options in yeah. it, yeah. then yeah. then we'll we'll go and ask for them to There's come up too. Big difference on warranty. That's a that's yeah, a big, yeah. Seven right. years or eight years on the more expensive machines, right? Two years or three years on the cheaper machines, right. so it might save us in the long run, yeah. So, exactly. yeah, that's the best exactly. wild card, yeah. 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 So that's we need to be aware of the price, but I would start by narrowing on the price because, again, of all those all the, all the yeah. possibilities, yeah. Yeah. There. you know, when you, when you go up and down so much, you end up being what do you like to operate better? Yeah. What's going to work better for you, yeah? Everything yeah. else is sort of. The give and take. It's yeah. almost like going to a car dealer and they give you a hundred dollar lease, but then you got eight thousand dollars down payment. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll give Mark a call and find out, and I want the crew to be there too to give their input too. Yeah. That buy-in will also help with uh, with it, stuff like that, and then uh, I'll meet with them and and discuss, and we'll look at it, and we'll try to now <clears throat> do. What is the goal that you want me to achieve? Do you want me to? Uh, um, Get it narrowed down to three, and then come back to the board based on the equipment, what it provides. Or do we want to, or, or do you want me to go with with the whole package of, of price as well? And uh, uh, I'd say go with the whole because if if you're gonna you're gonna have the equipment, you're gonna have the crew, you're gonna have everybody there. Yeah. Come up with okay, here's what. You, Here's what you all would recommend back to all of us, mm -hmm. you know, instead of trying to do it twice, you know. Um, you may have, you may have a clear winner, brother. Yeah. It's too big for us. We got to get out of this and go 20 plus. 
could be an outcome too. Yeah. 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 I mean, narrowing it down and getting three three of these uh, uh, machines, and then uh, that's just one step. And then getting it here and trying it and see if it's actually going to be feasible for us to have something that big yeah. uh, is the next step. Yeah. And again, and if they say that will away, determine what, yeah, the same thing that's too big, big then, yeah, it's very sad. Well, I, I think is what, I think it, what uh, he mentioned was that uh, uh, create the scenario. Yeah. Create the scenario and put us into it. And then uh, it, it meets what Dave is also concerned about. If it's too big, it's yeah. going to be too big. Yeah. Exactly. There's no other way around it. Yeah. Just make sure they put the risk list on, on the thing, not on the big bucket. They'll blow that son of a gun off and eat it. What's that? Uh, Starts with a G. It's uh, that's part of the, that. The guy, the guy, yeah, guy, G E I T H system. It's a manufacturer of a certain. Must be a higher quality. It, and with, with hydraulic change, so the guys don't have to get out. To that's what John Deere got, right? Hydraulic change. What you're talking about, hydraulic. But, yeah. You shoot it and you get, clean that bucket. Big bucket on it. Quick cut, but yeah, that makes it a lot easier. What we're going to discover is that what we want doesn't exist. No, oh, yeah. it's just. Don't ever say that to a salesman. Exactly. <laughs> you set yourself up for it. That's right. That's right. What we want doesn't exist. <laughs> so, our next meeting is when? The 19th? July 19th. July 19th. July 19th. Yeah. Have that yeah. for you. I shouldn't say it doesn't exist. GPS isn't now. Who cares? You want me to work if you get a cell phone? I mean, you get a smartphone. Oh, really? Yeah. And you tip on it. Got a beautiful system in it. You got a smartphone. You don't have a smartphone? Huh. I've been going for my That's an that's an antique one. <laughs> okay. So you got it? We'll do what happens. Yeah. All right. Oh, unlicensed dogs. There are. We're going to send out. There are a stunning number of people who didn't license their dogs. This well, the dog dead? No. Did anybody check to see if they're well, still alive? I was thinking, I went to the list. People probably just didn't do it because of COVID. I really think that. Oh, they're just they're 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 Oh, yeah. No, I know a lot of these people. I, I'm going they're like, oh, I guess you didn't think I had to. No, two reasons. Okay. It, 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 it could be accessibility. <laughs> What'd you say? Say they're calling a Trump. <laughs> That's everybody's excuses for everything. Don't ever blame Trump, but I'm not too much. But oh, 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 you don't find out that we have in the past. This person has moved, the dog is deceased. Okay, right, right, right. But but that's where and, and again as they start um, plotting their way through this. Yeah. Um to find out there's an office porch for them today. Mm -hmm. Just reminding folks, and here's your time frame yeah. for doing it, including if, if you know if you don't have the dog anymore, let's you know you take it off and this sort of a thing. So I should be on that list right now. I don't know what happens. <laughs> you want yeah. uh oh I will do it tomorrow. I have a new one. It's a new one. You can get their names too. Yeah, we we can yeah. yeah. Do you wait till the following April or do you do it as soon as you get a new dog? Yeah, you should you should license them if when they come, them yeah, the you should do it right away. Wait six months and All right. when dogs are here, they're usually we'll get I don't I don't think you prorate or anything. So you get yeah. when they when they arrive. Yeah. 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 So it's twenty bucks or something. That's great. Okay, but we have to. Do we have? Wasn't the animal control officer one of the vacant positions? Uh, no. But no, we, we do have. We have the the ACO. It's Keith, who's also our tech yeah. Oh, got it. In the past, we've had a couple of assistants that are vacant. Oh, okay, maybe. Yeah. But so far, he has begged for assistance. So, <laughs> and we probably don't have anybody to fill it. Exactly. So he's doing fine. Right. With um, that help. Right. So what what we need to do 
What do you need to do to move this forward? So the motion to sign, there's a, uh, I got it's an official warrant. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Got it. So you, you have to put it in the paper. What do you think? No, this is a warrant from the town clerk to the select board so that these dogs can be um, euthanized if necessary. Basically, that's what the warrant is to actually go collect the dog and euthanize the dog <laughs> in a humane way. Well, we don't, if we they don't, don't we're uh, at that point now. Please. Holy moly. Uh, we're not, we're not, not doing that right I'm now. Not, I'm not interested. <laughs> so what we always do. <laughs> I was just like, hey, I'm like, hey. I just know that that's the, that's the, that's the outcome of nothing is finding an adoption. Out. But we always find the person taking the box. Gotcha. The statutory process is, is the resolution of the matter one way or the other. Right. Well, let's step back. How often have we had to do this? This happens every May. Or June. No, 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 but, no but, we had to euthanize the dog. Oh, never. 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 But it's the, it's the, it's the teeth behind the it's negotiation the, of. It, it's right. the process, which is right. Well, or but but this year there are so many folks that haven't yeah. licensed their dogs. It seems to me we should wait until that time period is getting closer to the end before we say we're going to come get you. Well, that's, that's what I that's what I said in my staff. Yeah, I work with Keith to come up with right. a way to treat transition this off COVID. Yeah, right. And get back to what the normal is after September right. 13th. Right. That would be different because Keith has a different way of operating than the other ACO. For example, uh, Eden for a few years had a pretty uh, interested ACO person and they would go out and knock on doors and say, right. hey, hi, yeah. guys, just let you know we have a requirement for licensing. Here's an information packet and then, you know, we're going around for the dog. Okay. So that's the, that's the upfront face. We haven't done that. Yeah. Ever. So we send letters. You had one of the people that was doing it that left. She was great. She, yeah, she, she did this. She did that sort of she stuff. She did. Yeah, Diane Stoney was yeah. the one that was looking at Edens to try to figure out how to do it here. Okay, correct. She, got, she moved to Maine. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if he's going to be that uh, aggressive type thing. I think he's more of a PR, but from which form. Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah. we send? Did we send specific letters to these people? Or they not? they get their notice at thirty days from April first, and then King usually provides this list in May or early June to gotcha. to the select board. That allows, authorizes, enables the enforcement officer, which is the ACO, to do whatever they need to do to bring about compliance. So if you go from five hundred and fifty licensed dogs pre-COVID and now we're at 300, there's a lot of flexibility <laughs> built in the COVID time where there's no enforcement right. and people kind of lost track of the, the cycle. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Exactly. So I think this so is we're getting into balance. Right. right. Uh, the next one. Right. You yeah. know, with, with dogs, like, uh, what's those shops that get? Uh, rabies. Rabies. rabies yeah. Is rabies shot one for life? No. no. Every two years. Uh, it might be a little longer now. Oh, right, right. It might be three years. Three years. Uh, I think it was one of the questions was like, after Ruby shop. So cool. You have to provide proof. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When you when you write write the because yeah. if you're <laughs> behind on that, you're going to have a little more yeah. longer. Yeah. So that's part but, of the problem. Well, sure. And that may be because for your regular appointments with a vet, it's been so hard from COVID. Right. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of things like that, people have. You know, I got mine came in and I called in and one of the dogs, one of the dogs needed a rabies shot in August, you know, really? and I said, and I said, I'm, I'm not, you know, so do I not license her? What do you want me to do? Or I'll do a reminder or license her and give like, oh no, she says, just do a little reminder when you get her, you know, because again, trying to get, <laughs> she, one of my older dogs, so she pulled and she was limping. So I called to get an appointment. I could have one in three weeks. I said, she'll be fine by then. <laughs> I, yeah, I, so I, yeah. I think it's yeah, so it's been the same thing. Every, everything's yeah. just so there was, I I think just doing it educationally for a while to get folks. Oh, well, we'll yeah. before we do anything more than that, before, I think the idea was that we would just for the next basically 30 days, 60 days, yeah. start to put the word out. Yeah. And okay. just encourage people because they're already behind. But then September 13th, I still need to talk to Keith about how much energy he wants to put into it. Right. It takes time. Energy, I'm not doing any more. Put it on. Is there, has it been on? Yeah, front porch. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
I think he has a Facebook page for Richmond okay. Info. I think he has control. I think he has. Okay. Oh, yeah. I like share it on my Facebook. Yeah, that's right. That's there's right. Everybody. There. There's so no, there's no the statutory humanely destroyed is what you would sign to, <laughs> to authorize Keith to do that after the else fails and there's got to be a legal solution. And some most dogs are adopted up. There's agencies that come and take the difficult dogs and the easy dogs. We don't ever have a problem with reaching out to those people when it gets to that. When point. it reaches that point. Do we need to sign it now? Can it wait until we get closer to we get called? No, you should no you should sign it now to keep things sort of on pace and then you won't moving. Okay. You won't see it again. No, what the town mother will do if we know a dog is not registered or rabies vaccinated vac vaccinated is the town and, and they go and bite some kid and got rabies and stuff is the town I think not not doing the best you can is the problem. So to, to to avoid all your responsibilities and not have animal control, to not have a warrant, to not have the records, you build your liability. Oh, right. So doing what we're doing. I think right. talking about education is good. Right. Doing the normal paperwork is good, and you can't ever do one hundred percent compliance. We just have we do have a problem of five hundred and fifty down to three hundred something. Right. That's, that's a problem. Well, just yeah. that's, problem. So that's what I'm going to talk to Keith about. How do we get back up to? Yeah. And, and I think I think just pushing it, letting folks know. Um, well, the flexibility is over. One. Yes. As of September 14th, there's no one we're going back to right. the, the way it used to be. Right. But you have you've got the summer to get it up and fill out. Well, that's not clerk not being open and having to make an appointment. Yeah. People are probably like, oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah. You know, exactly. I just want to make sure all the hurdles are uh, yeah. bring you back to where it was before. Okay. Yeah, but Prior. when we were in COVID. All you had to do was go online and fill up, fill out the form, send her a copy, and and drop it off. It's okay, yeah, yeah it's easier now. You can do it. It's easier. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, she started doing online payments. So the only reason you were coming to the office was to either drop off a check or you right. mail it. Right. Same zoning permits are online. Highway right. permits are right. online. There's I ended up in a big conversation so with a Hyde Park resident about like the work. Yeah. 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 Tell you have a driver's license, you're gone because you know you can do it all online, right? Oh, okay. Like, like, okay. All right. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. You mentioned that. I didn't forget. Oh, here we go. The doing the letter to Dale Percy. Oh, for the culvert. Did you guys have a motion a second? Oh, I'm sorry. we didn't. No, we didn't. We got the thing. Right. Okay. Need a motion and a second to. Oh, I have a motion. I'm sorry. Second. Uh, okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? You got something down there I need to sign or sign this one, Ron? No. Oh, that's fine. That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. Okay. This is the Percy letter. You see it in your. <laughs> Right, Ron sent me one and I had him we dra drafted a little bit. I said, how about the part where if you look through it, you can't see daylight on the other side? I mean, that is there is there a statute of limitation ran out on, on, on the one thing on that culvert? The one thing can we just call them and say, come up and fix that culvert, sink it. Well, they refused. They refused. We did that. They came up and they looked at it and they said it's fine. Well, then I would send them another letter saying, if you well, don't, here's, here's the, here's if you the, don't, you will never get a chance to bid on any more yeah. right back stuff. And that's, that's, I think having a select board letter says that. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Even if it doesn't nice. say it. It doesn't, yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. You got it's, it, it's yeah. in your packet. I, okay. And so basically, yeah. just get a vote on you signing it. Then this way, I just and, want everybody to look at it. The, the yeah. content yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. Wrong. Oh, hello. She's <laughs> checking things out. Okay, right. But just to agree, I sort of worked with Ron to say, you know, you want me to call Percy and say, look, I'm not an engineer, but if I look through a culvert and I can't see through it, it's telling me it's not all right. You got a little error in this thing right here. Drops it out from right on it. You've got me voice chair, and I think that's exactly the same. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's kind of confusing at times. Okay. So are we so we need to we we'll probably need a uh, uh, motion on the Percy letter. Uh, so 
All in favor signify by saying aye. I'm just making aye. a dab of everything we've signed down here. You don't have to sign okay. it. Just, you know, I'm the one who gets get some trouble. With them. I'll give us that. I'll give us one back. Give us one. No, I think she only signs that one. Oh, uh, they did the first name. You want to fix your second name? I just okay. crossed out the vice chair. Yeah, yeah. She signed your last name. Okay. <laughs> oh, you need that too? Something new? <laughs> um, the next one I just no one for it. had was the, uh, was just so folks can see it. And I think it'd be nice if we all signed that one. Do you have one that we can all sign? The letter okay. to Ken and Sterling View? Uh, I think that grew isn't there a, just a well, that's, that's right. Yeah. right. Yeah, I left it to Cypher Select Board. Okay, right. So we can all sign the bottom. Okay, making a collection of everything signed. So if you want to start, we'll shift start it. Start different here, though. Yeah. Oh yeah, you have to change the time before it does that. And I haven't figured out how to do it. It's in the second. Yeah, shut it up. So that's where you want to put it from since you're the first one. Oh, I have to okay. Or give it to me. Oh boy, if she can fix that, I'll sign mine down there too. I think I can. <laughs> okay. Now get into the remote work policy or teleworking. It's something the entire country is dealing with right now, trying to figure out. Um, I like all these papers. Here's what I'm looking for. All right. We ready to dive into telework policies? You have a hard stop at 730 for the net zero. So we advertise at 730. But ah, okay. Uh, Andre's couldn't make it at six. So okay. we asked for a time. So on the agenda, you'll see 730 on there. Uh, so, how do you want to manage that? We could, there might be a few people jumping on the screen over there to participate. Okay. And so, uh, what should what should be a quickie we can do to take up a few minutes about the uh, the sheriff's contract? Yep, that's a uh, sheriff contract was proposed at the budget of democratic voters approved, as yep. well as the uh, patrol and communications budget. Match that voter approved amount. It's the same basic contract that we've always had. That we've always had, right. So there's no contract changes. The dollar amounts are updated for the town meeting day votes. The um, the group that's working is going to propose that next year we just that we the contract be more inclusive and have a better list of the sorts of services that we're getting um, so that it's more clear to, you know, when we when we post it to a constituent looking at it that we, you know, that there's a detective that's paid for and all the domestic yeah. abuse and all the child abuse and all the drug work and everything that goes on to see that it's, you know, the sheriff's contract is not just speeding tickets on the road, road and accidents and those sorts of things. But whatever everybody agreed that trying to get into that right now and just going to, I think next year there will probably be substantive changes that we'll all work our way through working with the sheriff. Um, but we've been doing the same contract for a long time with the money on it. So just to keep the same thing for now works okay. Um, so I got a motion to approve that if it's good to go. I think you have that. Yeah, we've got the 
the yes, it's signed. Signed. So, so uh, moved. They're right over there. You have to abstain, okay. right? Oh. Okay, we need a second down there. Oh, second. Sorry. <laughs> all right. that's, that's okay. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody abstaining? Aye. <laughs> Not or is that an aye? Yes, okay. Uh, anybody opposed? Okay. Uh, now, do you have the copy we should sign or, you know, that's, that's the one that's up here. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. There we go. Okay, there's nouns. Okay, okay. Well, this is going to all get signed. Okay. First day of summer. That signature sounds good. Authoritative <laughs> signature. It is. It's like, yeah. All right. Yeah, did you get the sign in or He shouldn't. Okay. Yep. Mm. This gets signed. Okay. <laughs> and then now uh, let me see. <laughs> you want to do your own? Yeah. Okay. And we did that. Then we need a motion for somebody to sign for the town of Hyde Park or uh, our ambulance service agreement. We move that we give Susan the authority to sign that one from okay. the fire department. Well, let Dave sign it because he missed one. No, no. So <laughs> <laughs> he woke him up, didn't you? Gee, you ought to poke that bear, didn't you? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. He's been, 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 <laughs> right. been too many years signing everything. That's right. <clears throat> hey. You know what's Okay. So now Ron, we need to go on to the next thing, right? It's going to take a minute to coordinate with the okay. online. We'll pick it up. It's so good. Okay, now we're down to 18. I look at with net zero. I went on the town website, so I my laptop at home to look at the, and I couldn't. I'm going to need it on something at least that yeah. size to be able to it. decipher the number of red lines. Mark was saying he worked with it because it was, it was just like this. It was just a massive blur of red lines to me. And I said, okay, I can tell. I'm not going to make any sense of this one. Yeah, that's what I about that screen. Oh. That I if you, if anybody can pull up the uh, from the home page, net zero middle. No, we got that link. Okay, I'm gonna just send us an email. No, I'm going to hear. Well, it's just on the home page. Oh yeah, it's here. Here to the website, there's a net zero in this east west middle. Yeah, so if you can at least pull the middle one up, I could have Andres talk about the middle, which is Church Street, Main Street intersection, and then he could explain things. I can I can turn it on this too for, for this end of the table. Okay. 
So is this helping me? <laughs> if I can, okay. Oh, yeah. that's, oh, that's better. No, we can see oh, well, when this, he this starts is... talking. It's okay. okay. You can follow along a couple times. Once okay. you know what the lines are, they, okay. it starts to work it's, a little. start to make sense? Okay. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Good. Let's hear me. Check and see who's actually in the room here. All right, let's just, yeah. Tony. You there? Hi, Tony. And Ken is here. And that's good. Okay. All right, so the board can see you, but I have to put it on the who's talking. So whoever's not talking won't be seen, but. So Andre, is it your, your time to show? Great. Thanks everybody. Um, I, my name is Andres Terizo with Watershed Consulting. And um, I just, just really quickly, we just wanted to give a, a refresher on this project. This was a project that um, uh, there was a Lake Champlain Basin Program grant, which was funding this project. Uh, the project scope was really to do a um, kind of a you know, really progressive stormwater assessment of the village area and you know recognizing that there is um, good soil resources in the village for uh, infiltrating stormwater and dealing with stormwater and also recognizing that there are some existing problems related to stormwater the gully the large gully um, you know some of the flooding issues there's erosion issues in various locations and so you know this project was conceived because of the ability to mitigate those problems and really utilize this this great resource uh of these 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 well-drained soils which are which exist and so we the, got the grant funding to do it we did a really intensive soils investigation with borings last summer to really characterize you know the soils all the way around um, we did uh, a modeling assessment stormwater modeling assessment of the entire area and um, came up with a concept design which basically the, the threshold we were trying to do was control fully control the hundred year storm which is over five inches of rain um, in 24 hours so really that was our goal was to try to take all that water and during a, one of these really extreme storms, basically try to put it all, you know, design something which could manage all that water. And so that's really what's shown on this plan. And, you know, one of the key, you know, in, components of that plan was also to integrate improvements with multimodal transportation, um, you know, recognizing that Dubois and King did the whole planning study we really wanted to build off of that and try to take a lot of the things that were in that plan, which which were favorable for the community, and really try to kind of work that into our overall layout. Um, and so I think that you know, I, and and I apologize. I know that the plan is busy, um, and I, it's you know, it, it's it's a complicated plan, but really it is just a kind of a first step to put it on paper, um, and and it involves a lot of changes to. Um, you know, to parking, to sidewalks, to crosswalks, and <clears throat> really related to the stormwater um, has two two primary features. You know, one being surface features, these green, what I would call like a green street stormwater feature. So if you've ever seen like a bioretention plants around the surface, we've integrated some of those. But a lot of the big stormwater storage is actually totally underground, and that's what's shown with those the boxes in the various locations those are those are stormwater chambers um, and those would sit underground so you wouldn't even necessarily know that those were there You'd just see a manhole on the surface to access for um, for maintenance it is what it's, it's and so that you know that is um that 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 encompasses kind of what we've come up with the the project timelines 
we're basically getting towards the end of our project scope right now. We're we're working on a final report to the Lake Champlain Basin program uh, that's going to be due at the end of the month, um, and then we're going to be basically turning that in as a package um, with all the modeling and mapping and, and the concept plans. And so that's just kind of the overall. And Tony Stout, who worked with us closely on the plan and really specialized in kind of looking at the streetscape type elements is here and I was going to have him um, you know walk us through if, if the board wanted just like a quick kind of walk through you know description and then wanted answers you know ask some questions we could field those afterwards does that does that sound That'd good be, that would be great all right great so how, how best to do that Tony do you have the plan in front of you I'm not sure if you can share your screen or if they're looking at it you can just call out features I'm reason Tony they, I've asked the select board to open up the uh, I think it's seg or, uh, section number two which is the church street middle section right. on their screens so if, if you have if you go to the town for anybody watching on the on the on the video, if you go to the Hyde Park homepage, HydeParkVT.com, I've posted the plans that Tony and Andres have been working on. The select board has opened up the plan called Middle, which is the Church Street se section. So if Tony can speak to the Middle plan or the Church Street section two, um, then we hopefully can follow along. I can do that. I'll do the best I can. I, I don't have a copy in front of me right now, but I have it pretty well imprinted in my head. Um, when the, the plans you saw last summer had the diagonal parking in front of the library, and there was some discussion of that, and the diagonal parking in front of the library has been removed from the plan. I did play with the diagonal parking on the opposite side of the street, which is, I believe is where Dubois and King had had it in one of their earlier studies. And it, it really caused some difficulty trying to fit it all in. And so we ended up just putting the parallel parking on the library side of Church Street. And I believe that was the direction you guys were heading in last summer. And a few parallel spaces on the opposite side, although they may interfere with the access to that former gas station on the corner. So that is certainly open for discussion in the future. And then the we realigned Church Street compared to what you saw last summer. So it you know fits this that parking scheme, and we reconfigured the curb extensions at the post office so there are still curb extensions there with the the wide crosswalk we did use barry city's um, approach to the curb extensions we have 13 foot radius curves uh, going as you go along the parking stalls you then turn at a 13 degree or 13 foot radius curve. Um, and then you curve back at 13 foot radius to the crosswalk. And the intent of that is to allow the plow trucks to get their blades into that corner and then gently go around the curb extension and then re enter the parking area on the other side of the curb extension. Question? Um, I have a question. Um, so are these the uh, model after the ones in uh, in Barry, or are they different than what the ones they have in Barry or Montpelier? Which one you said? We <laughs> completed the Barry, Barry City. Barry City, yes. And they're, they're the same. As as accurate as we can do it right now. Again, this is a 30% plan, so they are they are totally open to fine tuning, depending on your your town's equipment and things like that. But we use Barry as the starting point. At this point in time, Barry hires the Vermont Department of Corrections to come and shovel out some of those uh, 
so that um, they clean them out properly and so the storm drains will work properly and you know and that's why I was just questioning that because I've helped with that crew. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's the same ones. Uh, the ones I understood are fairly new, but I'm not I'm not sure of that. But we used some of the curb extensions they had right on uh, the main drag in Barry City. Yeah, those ones I was talking about. Yeah, I think for re for reference, if you've been to Johnson's new Main Street, those are more of the traditional, probably like five foot radius. They're almost impossible to block. Yeah. So Barry tried to soften that up with a bigger plow friendly curve. And that's what that's what Tony's mentioning. We we'd have to match our blade turning issue to the final design of the curve base. Thank you, right. Tony. Yeah, go ahead. And that the post office um, curb extensions, I think Ron had mentioned that on the east side of the road of Church Street in front of Public Works. Uh, they sometimes do snow storage operations in that area. Um, if that's an issue, one of the options would be to angle that crosswalk to the northeast so that you could, you'd basically take out one of those parking stalls and you could slide the curb extension to the north. So there are some options there um, to make that crosswalk work. The key is that that crosswalk with the curb extensions is a, um, trying to think of the, the politest word for it, but it's it basically embraces drivers as they come down Church Street. So it reinforces the notion of slowing down before they get into the main parking area. Um, and so that's that's why it's an important feature to use if you can make it work. But that's going to be a choice for the town. There's no sidewalk on that side of the road, is there? There is? Yeah. 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 Sidewalk on the east side goes up to the corner just before you take a bend to the left if you're going north. Yeah. The one on the west side stops in front of right past the post office, I think. Yeah. Because it's on street park, it converted to it probably was a sidewalk at one point, but yeah. converted to on street parking north of the post office. Yeah. Well. Well. That, yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's pretty much the you know in terms of the streetscape what we did on Church Street in terms of any changes from last summer. That's that's the focal area. And then we can move over to Main Street if you want. Uh, west End or East End? We can do the West End over by the Opera House. Okay. Or we can go down to the main, you know, the intersection of Church and Main if you want to, and then we can work our way west. Oh, okay. we, were, we were just looking at Church and Main. But... Yeah, right. so let's, we can do that. Okay. So you'll see the same curb extensions at that intersection with the 13 foot radius swinging out and then swinging back to the crosswalk and then there's a 25 foot radius curve around through the intersection and then there's an extension around the little pocket uh, storm basin that we have for some pre-treatment that andres mentioned earlier and then we swing back to the existing curbing on the north side this is heading west back into those parallel parking stalls and on the south side we basically have those radii curb extensions that bring the crosswalk um, the edge of the curbing northbound by eight feet from where it is today. Yeah, you're talking about the red. Which makes for a shorter crosswalk and again, constricts the traffic and reinforces the notion of a three-way stop sign. 
you know, one of the complaints we've got, well, we've heard from ever because I worked in Hyde Park is uh, people not familiar with that intersection. They're looking, if they're coming from the West, they see the school at the end and they miss Church Street stop sign totally with the way the parking is now because the park, depending on the vehicle, you could totally block the stop sign and people are looking so far down the road, they're not trying to blow the stop sign. They just can't see it when they're trying to get right. to the other You don't even see Church Street. Right. Right. Yep. Yep. So this, this is really going to make that a, uh, a, a structural intersection that's not friendly to cars in the sense that they're going to feel like they are, they need to slow down before they even know that there's pedestrian crosswalks. Right. And it, and it's it's almost a subconscious reaction that they have when they see the curbing pressing in on them. I think we all have that experience when we drive down streets. When the lanes narrow up and everything starts pressing in on us, we tend to ease off on the accelerator. And in, ideally, the curb extensions at the post office, the opera house, and the state office give them a preview of the same thing, even though there's no stop control at those at those points. But it kind of gives them a heads up. Oh, something's going on here. I'm getting into a congested area. Time to ease off on the gas. Yeah. But again. I think it's important that there are so many elements in this, uh, let's call it the million dollar plan for Andre's uh, project cost, that it's gonna be done in pieces probably, but one of the, all, all these elements that you see, we're not seeing everything. We're not seeing uh, trees, we're not seeing street lights, you know, changes for pedestrian lighting, uh, crosswalks, could stay or go. They're they're not that critical. You know, the, the one at the opera house is not critical to the stormwater plan, but it's more of a traffic calming component. Right. That, okay. Thank you. Same thing with the state office location. We do have a little bit of pre-treatment in those areas. There are other ways you could achieve that pre-treatment. Okay. Yep. Um, we. <laughs> The, the pork and gavels on the east side. Right. We did, we, the plan continues to have the additional green strip along the south edge of Main Street between the sidewalk and the, the new curbing. So you would see some enhanced, you know, green space in that area and a slight reduction in the impervious surfaces. And then at the far west end where West Main comes in, um, we've continued the same design we had last summer, which was a design that I'm trying to remember which plan it came off of, but it's it's on one of the, the plans that it's already been recommended to the village. And so we basically templated that onto this plan and added in some of the pre-treatment uh, storm basins. Yeah, that's part of the, uh, yeah, just to clarify, the, uh, the realignment of West Main Street is part of the sinkhole project, which is another grant project that's uh, started as a transportation alternatives project in 2005 that we're hoping to finish up next year, which would include that new alignment at uh, West Main and Main. And then when you go on east on Main Street, we talked about the state office building and the curb extensions there. And then you get down to, is it Depot Street? Yes. Yeah. And um, that intersection, again, we did not reconfigure that other than to show it as we understand it's currently being viewed by the, by the village. So there's there's no substantive changes at that intersection. And there's no sidewalks going in front of the school, 
right? We did not change any of anything from the existing conditions. Got it. <clears throat> Again, our, our focus on this project was stormwater, but we wanted to take advantage of some of the major you know, opportunities that might present themselves with some of the changes in the streetscape yeah. so that you could envision what those might look like. So I have a couple, of, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Oh, good. My computer's been screwed up all day. Uh, there are a couple of major changes that are about to happen downtown. <clears throat> the, um, or in the village. Uh, the, the layout of the uh, electric company is going to change fairly significantly. It's probably going to cost uh, the existing four parking spots on the uh, the existing in the existing parking lot. Um, <clears throat> basically, the section towards the old towards the old garage is going to shift down a bunch, and it's going to make it fairly difficult to have the trucks, the personal trucks, parked in there, and to be able to get the uh, the working trucks out of the barn. There's also a fairly substantial um, drainage issue going on back there. There's going to be a bunch of development. <clears throat> and I hope that that's being factored into this in terms of uh, the groundwater carry off. Have you talked to people down there? Um, related to what's to, related to what specifically? I'm sorry, I I was following you, but I mean we've we've definitely had discussions with Ron and you know um, Mark about the utilities and you know specifically the water line relocation. Um, you know that's shown on the plans. Is there is there something is there a specific location that you're thinking might be a yeah it's basically area? the area it's basically the area uh behind the uh the old hotel that's currently being redeveloped and that will run up almost to the top of the mountain almost to the top of the hill there but there'll be a large parking lot behind the existing building that will take the entire area it will be uh, appropriately um, drained, but I'm not sure that it's factored into your plans. So, are you talking about if you're on the uh, to the east of Church and to the north of Maine, right, right on behind like 183 Maine, yeah. 213 Maine, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we. So we are aware of that, and we we actually our our calculations actually do consider all of that development. We've been in, in uh, coordination with the design engineer for that project, uh, Grenier, and we we have we took their new land use information and their modeling information, and so the um, you know we kind of worked with them. I think they're going to be meeting their state requirements on site, right? Um, However, you know, the state requirements don't require you to manage to the level that we're trying to manage to. So the overflow would have, would eventually make it make it into our system and our system is sized to manage that overflow. So yeah, we are considering that. And what will your system do to the water table in that area during spring thaw? Um, well, the, you know, the soils work that we did was really, um, intensive for a reason. I mean, we were, we, we wanted to make sure that there wasn't any kind of a limiting layer or anything down, down at the levels where these chambers would be. I mean, these are going to be below frost line. And so the idea with the chambers is that they would allow water to infiltrate even, you know, even during, um, you know, periods where the surface isn't the, you know, allowing the water to get in there. And so we, you know, we did borings fairly deeply and we never, 
observed any kind of um, limiting layer, which which could be problematic for well, you know like elevating the groundwater table. The area directly across the street from the library, uh, the post office. Yep. Typically ends up with uh, a water table about five feet below the surface of the uh, below the grass line. <clears throat> and i'm not sure that you i'm not sure that that made it into the calculations where where exactly is that information coming from uh -huh. is that from a, a boring log that you've looked at or where where was that it's my basement and it has a hole and the water comes up to the uh, so the floor in the basement crawl space is five feet down roughly five feet down from the grass line and the hole down there fills up with water from the from the bottom it doesn't come through the walls and it's all the way up to the floor and i and i can pump it all day and what and sorry can you what's your what's your physical address again hmm? 225 church i'm directly if you walk out the front door of the uh post office you walk in my front door across the street 25 okay okay i'm right next to the electric company and okay. it's um what happens is, is there's a lot of melt meltdown coming off of the hill the mm -hmm. works way down i'm not sure how the restructuring of the parking lot back there is going to change it uh but it is it's a I, I have standing I have standing water in a sump to the level of the basement for about two or three months during spring thaw. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that you guys captured I saw when you were doing the course, I don't think that you captured it at its full extent. Okay, well, I mean that's you know that's certainly noted. And you know, again, this this report is kind of trying to prove out these kinds of feasibility questions, and yeah. um, it it's definitely it's obviously something that we're we want to design around. I mean, we don't necessarily we're not intending to you know this plan is definitely not intending to create new problems. We're trying to to solve existing ones. So I think we'll note that and revisit the the soils in that area, and you know, as part of a final design, I mean, that could be you know that would be an important consideration that we'd have to we'd have to you know try to really get to the bottom of why that's happening in your basement whether you know maybe it's it's runoff from the hill that's coming down and then kind of running down from the surface kind of down along the foundation potentially i don't i don't really know specifically. yeah it actually it actually seeps in it's not coming it's not coming to the foundation and dropping in it comes up from the bottom okay so potentially right in that area, maybe there is, you know, some kind of a, a limiting layer there because, um, you know, around that area, you know, some of the sand layers are, are are really, really deep, but that doesn't necessarily mean there isn't something there which is blocking the water flow downward. So, I mean, that's point taken. Yeah, I know my sand goes down six feet. I'm not sure beyond that. And, um, is there some way that we can get an estimate of the number of parking spaces that you're going to remove? Or what what are you going to do to the parking in the immediate area? Tony, do you know that do you have that number off the top of your head or no? The, the, I, the... I do not. I don't have a, a net parking number. I know we were not losing much. Is that something we could probably yeah. get? pretty easily yep. absolutely so we can we can provide that that'd be great thanks for your uh thanks for your input there sure this is playing curveball up to down you uh where were you tony were you gonna were you continuing did you cover the whole area before we I got think it. from the streetscape we were done yeah um so 
So I guess one thing, Ron, did 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 the board see the the estimate that we provided when we costed out the system? Yeah, it's uh, it's a million dollars, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's I handed it that out tonight. Yeah, it's and you know the um, you know just just to kind of put that in, in a little bit of perspective, I think from from a water quality standpoint, the table that I provided. So, you know, the the overall amount of uh, impervious area that this system would manage is just over eight acres. And we, you know, we're able to calculate a phosphorus reduction that we would be able to achieve. And that's typical for, you know, state funded projects. If you wanted to pursue, you know, funding for this project through, through say, a state grant, they would be asking for this. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the phosphorus load reduction is about 12, a little over 12 kilograms per year. And when that's translated into a um, cost um, per, per kilogram reduced, basically it comes out to be about $4,940, which, which is actually quite, um, quite a good buy in terms of how the state um, measures the efficiency of, of projects to remove phosphorus it it shows that it's it's a it's a it's a beneficial project in terms of how much you're getting for how much you'd have to spend to do it so that would be good for you know for a grant for a grant application moving ahead um, obviously there's there could be a lot of other costs in addition beyond stormwater related to you know landscaping streetscape things but specifically just the stormwater infrastructures um, the chamber is nine hundred and fifty-seven thousand. So, hmm. and one point six million gallons of stormwater would be infiltrated during the hundred-year storm. So every time it rains, a hundred-year storm, one point six million gallons would not run off. Is that the old hundred-year storm, or is that an updated estimate of what? A hundred year storm would look like. <laughs> um, what's the comparison here that you're asking? Uh, yeah, uh, there are many places where hundred year storms are happening every ten years, and that presumably means that a hundred year storm will be significantly more powerful than we currently think of as a hundred year storm. Right. That's. I think that that that's that's the, the newest data that we have. That's what the state still considers within their new stormwater manual as the hundred-year storm. I don't have the exact inches, but it's it's been revised. It's not from 1960 anymore. It's 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 current. So whatever that current number is, that's what that that's what the modeling is based on. Great. Well, and once once this design is in place, it doesn't <laughs> it matters for a bunch of other reasons, but in terms of stormwater management, it doesn't matter if the hundred year storm is every five years or every fifty years or every thirty seven years. You have the capacity to handle that amount of water whenever whenever it descends on you. Right. I agree with that, but it that typically means that the storm that actually will occur in the future every hundred years will be significantly larger than the current or the previous hundred year storm. So you're talking about a significant increase in the amount of rain that's going to be coming down during a really bad storm. Well, um, yeah. To be, to Andre, to follow up on what Ken just said. So let's say that PH Edwards complex gets built uh, they have to get a state stormwater permit that deals with the stormwater that falls on that property what is their design standard to get their state permit uh 10 10 year so anything over a 10 year will exceed their capacity and flow into the town system that's right so that's that's the, that's what we got to impact is everybody that's in the village, whether it's a new project or an old project, is sending everything to the town system. 
see the through over the yeah. curb under yeah. pipes that we don't see and we have to deal with it on our end so the more that you can take that water when it first comes and really don't build up that momentum and send yeah. it to the ravine send it to cross west main street the rail trail to the river the better those structures are protected not to mention the water quality but just simply from a flow capacity we will continue as a town stormwater system to continue to deal with those bigger storms that susan has mentioned and this will stop some of the headwaters if you will on most of the storms. Okay. Yeah, and I, and I would say too, and you know, I think by design, just by the design, the methodologies that we've used to calculate the designs and the um, the soil testing that we did, basically the 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 infiltration rates that we've measured, I think um, you know, even even in the case of where the climate could be changing and these storms could be getting more intense, um, the system, you know, if it was built kind of as plan as per plan now, it's going to be pretty conservative in terms of um you know managing really those those largest flooding flooding events is is what what we are going for so i think you know it, it's it's going to be pretty well sized even if even if that does get more frequent or you know if there's a storm that happens to be over kind of the the, the hundred year it's still going to be effectively managing it you know that was kind of the whole goal when we started there. Okay. Yeah. Anybody have any more questions? No. We're good? Yeah, We're good. Okay, well, I will. Yeah, yeah. What's I'll, I'll follow up with the board. Pardon? No, I was just going to say I, you know, I'll, um, I'm going to be working with Ron to, to finish the the report and everything, and then um, you know you'll have the final product, you know, relatively soon. Okay. Wait. And again, I think for everybody, when you you see it, it's a plan. It isn't. Um, it doesn't mean that it's in concrete or super duper steel or whatever and that it can't be can't be changed again for the parking and the variety of you know of issues that come up but it gives us a really solid framework um and and uh and possibilities of what we can do and i think some some sort of general targets for moving forward that was the intent Whew. yeah right. yeah I well, I'd say you're quite successful then. <laughs> I found I found on my on my iPad if I just pulled up the little pieces and I blew it up really big, it made a lot more sense. I just had to move along with it. <laughs> okay, I think that's the Thanks. end of our questions. You're good. You work with Ron. Yep. We'll get a final report and um again, if we always as we think of the questions after you're gone. We can send them through Ron. Oh yeah, anytime. Thank you, Andres and Tony. Thanks for coming yeah. in, Ken. Too, that was good. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks a lot. <clears throat>
mandate, which is you know nice. You know, not all programs that the state adopts come with funding. Right. So every year we get an announcement um, in the ballpark of thirteen to fifteen thousand dollars worth of MRGP compliance money to deal with erosion issues that are been identified by the state as goals to cure, mitigate, whatever. So we've done three, I think, so far, and we've tried to get each annual one done. So we have a 20% match. And we start with the bottom part of Diggins Road. Right. This year, we got funding for the middle part of the hill near the fire pond. <laughs> and this next year of work, which Rob Moore today told me might be able to get done this fall, but it, it's I'm not piecing that together right now. It'll be the finish of Diggins Road. Right. So Diggins Road goes as a class four out towards the Prisma. Right. It's deficient. It's not that bad a condition, but it could use a little tune up and some gravel and some cutouts to stop the water from working the uphill side. So that we would be off Diggins Road for repairs. So a bunch of years ago, the select board of the Landowners want to do a major upgrade to get the class three. That's right. But they didn't participate. <laughs> so the black board regrouped, and all we're trying to do is erosion control. So if this final phase comes up next year and it's done, we'll be off. We'll be done. Until somebody wants to develop it and put it like the council affairs. So because it comes up every year, because it's a little bit of money. We have we have the twenty percent match every year in our small world projects line. Um, we have two choices. One is to continue to hear about these and go to the board and talk about Diggins Road and what's going to be done, or authorize the town administrator to work with the road form and just make it part of the regular work program because the money so far is regular, and we would work. All the work has to be approved by a regional planning. So they administer the money. So they have to come out, they have to look at it, we have to talk about what qualifies and all that stuff. And it would be easier basically just to have that money flow through. I would bring the proposal, but I'd be already authorized to do everything else. You're talking about doing the road work all the way to the state gate? The turnaround. Yeah, there, there's a gate in a turnaround area. Way in. Before you take the left turn to go up or take the right turn. <laughs> There's a discrepancy that we need to talk about, but apparently when you go down about nine tenths of a mile, maybe a mile from the fire pond, there's a turnaround area that people turn around. Because there's two. There, there, there's one that goes right that goes towards the, the water. The water. And there's one straight that goes out what we call the fork mm -hmm. that, That's a turnaround there. And the state's got a gate there. Yeah. Actually, the class four road goes all the way down through to the old, uh, what do you want to say, foundation to, 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 to the uh, sauna down there, the, the old board mills. And that road so is. All of that, what he's talking about is the reason why the second request is, is to get rid of potentially this class four status. The class four status hooks us into MRGP compliance. Or very few interested parties out there. You got the state, you got a camp, you got the line or the lean yeah. out there, and then you have four wheelers that like to go on our class fours because it's open to them. Um, but it's costing all the taxpayers money to now we have to do something about those class fours. So I would take whatever whatever turnaround you're talking about. I don't want to go see it yeah. and say it makes sense to go here, but the rest of that class four road we should just give to those property owners. They all maintain the right of way. And you could designate a public trail so you don't give up your right of way municipal, but you would prevent ATVs. You, you, you're saying from right away, get rid of it from, from there to the barn house. Wherever it makes sense. Yeah, wherever it makes sense. Yes. Yeah, same yeah. thing we do. We have the right of way as a public trail. We don't have any class four responsibilities right. to maintain it anymore. Okay. The I owners out there right. maintain the rights. They, they can always go on a public trail because they were there before we changed the classification. They don't lose any rights to them, but public would lose rights. You know, the vehicle ATVs want to be able to go out there without permission from the landowner. How many houses are out there now? The lot from the fire pond, there's three, maybe. Oh, uh, just a uh, Is there anything built past the market? Show me the last one. No, 
It goes back to three back storage. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, but anyway, so this GIA agreement, which comes up, raised these kind of issues. That's why I'm talking about it now, because there's like issues to potentially resolve where we don't want to maintain some of these right. older class work. Um, but I do want to go and, and look at the regional planning, figure out what the right end of the road is, have the state pay for 80% of tuning that road up to get it to be a really good class for it with no erosion, and then pretty much take it off our maintenance list for a long time. But we're talking running down the beans. I don't know if you're talking about that. That would still be on class three. The class four. 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 That would be, be class four. So it could be. No, it is. I mean, but it is now. I haven't seen it yet. That's why I want to go up and look to see what the condition is. The worse that road gets, the more costly it gets for everybody in town to maintain it. So, how well they want to maintain class four roads to old camp. That's my question. It depends who owns the camper, obviously. I don't, I don't think it should. I think it should be a really just a factual look at what makes sense for the public and where you stop your maintenance responsibility and where do you turn yeah, it back to a private road. Where do you turn it back to basically private maintenance? So I, I hear what you're saying, but I, I, I try not to think like that. I can say what makes sense for the long term health of the road system and the taxpayer cost to maintain something. Because that road, road passed. Went to Eden, I think, at one point. Yes, yeah, we'll wait up to the official patch up there on the... yeah, right. So that's, okay. that's a separate issue. But the first yeah. issue is letter yeah. of intent is due, due June 25th right. for that phase three to get past the fire pond that I'd like to apply. So, what we for. need is to authorize Ron to sign the required documents. So moved. Second. I don't understand. It's documents for what? To get the money and so all the work that they're doing to keep doing it. We have to. He comes in and tells us, and the planning and the yeah. county planning commission has to agree with everything. But this is literally. We don't want to miss it. Do the paperwork. Yeah. That's all. That's all yeah. we're asking him to do. If you want to write up there sometime, I'll be holding me. Take care. Yeah. No, okay. No, we need no, all in no. favor signify of letting Ron sign this big one. <laughs> Say yeah. hi. Hi. Oh. <laughs> Anybody opposed? Okay. We'll get yeah. that in. I think last summer took the dogs and hiked down in through there. It's rough for us. Yeah. Oh, well, this is class one road. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me see. let me see. We'll get the odds and ends. The uh, okay. We'll hope we can do this by the end of the month. Uh, if you go to fifteen, the Harvey loan payoff. Just where do we want to put the money? And now that it's paid off, we don't have to keep five thousand dollars in the in the union bank out. We can just do a thousand. So that means that we've got um, forty-eight thousand four hundred fifteen dollars and thirty-five cents that we can sit someplace to decide what we want to do with it. What we have traditionally done when it was coming in in smaller payments was split it between the, the highway reserve and economic development. Well, with the pending purchases in the highway department, and I don't know how we have to divide it. You know, it's going to be a third and two, uh, you know, two thirds or three, whatever that way to to um, to divide it up or whatever. But uh, what does anybody else think? I, I... I'd like to offset if we're going to buy that. If we're going to buy the excavator, I'd like yeah, to offset. We know, so, we know so much other expense is coming too. Yeah. I say, but it's nice to have some money. There's some flexibility with economic development. I say things like, you know, it's like these young parents are getting really involved in the sports and doing the kids and all that sort of stuff. It would be nice at some point if they need something to be able to be able to give them a couple of thousand bucks to help do what they're doing. So to be able to have some of this money that's come in that we sort of every year use to spread around. So maybe take, I'm just saying, doing the math easy, 40,000 into the, into the, um, into the highway reserve the rest. and the uh, and the rest into where do we have the most flexibility run? I think economic development hasn't had a lot of money and we don't really have any way to put money in there yeah. other than the, Har the Harvey loan was right. the only was it, money right. that was like maybe two or three in there. 
Right. Okay. Over, over 10,000. If you took the 4,000 or the residual from your motion, I think at that point you have some need to look at the programs and you have some money. You yeah. Do, you have yeah, to be able to qualify and be able to do something with it. Um, the other ones are really not specific. Recreation Reserve Fund. Yeah, and they're going to they, they have their annual source surplus money. So if they raise enough revenue through their fundraisers and they don't spend as much, that the voters already said take it surplus and put it in the reserve. So they're actually doing pretty well with their reserve yeah. on recreation now. Right. Uh, this will right. probably be the last infusion from economic development for economic Yeah, development. I would think so. Right. So I would use right. that leveraging down the road. Oh, money, so if you right. say, let's give 2000 that project, how much did you already raise for your project? The money you raised yeah. to do a math. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. 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 so you yeah. leverage it to yeah. encourage Being able to have areas. some money yeah. to do that is slowly but surely. It really, it, from what I found, it, it, if the town supports the volunteers, either in their program or by spending a little time with them or talking to them or writing a thank you to the, you know, whatever, it, valuable stuff because people mm -hmm. stay involved and they okay. really do feel yeah. like the town's supporting them. Yeah. So yeah. having that available is really good. And also Ken has supported that over the years. I was just oh, say yeah. that. And I think that's yeah. nice if we could put a portion of that aside. Yeah, so they got um, aside. I think Ken would, would appreciate that as well too. Yeah. Okay. So let's do let's do forty into the highway reserve and eight thousand four hundred and fifteen dollars and thirty five cents. <laughs> Dave? Yeah, I don't know about So move. So move. Right. <laughs> Second. Oh, okay. All, all the favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Um, oh, I just, because I see it down at the bottom here, the, the Paul Broom grant. Are we. Oh, that's a they're going. They just. They're going to be here in July. Yeah, they're going to come in July, because they're figuring that all out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see. I'm like, there's my other page here. Um. Okay, do you want to try to take a run at the remote work policy? Let me go through my, I've been okay. trying to keep up with your changes. Okay, I don't, sorry. Um, I'm just trying to do the things that should be quick no, that we want to make sure we no, got done. There are some quick right. things left too, so. Open this for, uh, this, do you want to do the stormwater funding updates? That's pretty quick. Okay, yep. So again, along the line of stormwater, we have uh, another grant program through the Loyal County Conservation District. The state of Vermont has again actually created a grant program that has less strings than usual. So it's called a block grant. And the block grant this year was opened up to private and public roads run through the Loyal County Conservation District. So I've been working with their director, Peter. Peter. And, yeah. Peter. and Peter and I have come up with uh, sort of the outlines of three projects that have been percolating that needed some funding, but we need to get approval from the state DEC. If DEC approves the three letters of request, the three in your records, uh, one was for Sylvain, one was for 10 Benz, and one was for Prospect, uh, that's potentially going to fund those projects, two of those projects for this fall, which was not on our Prospect was so they wasn't, but if money comes in to help do those projects, then we can really kind of pick that up a little bit. Ten bands is more of a planning project because all of the stormwater stuff you're talking about at Maine, right? And so they're being yeah. and dumped out at ten bands. So we're trying to. <laughs> I looked at it. I'm actually calling this ten bands the phase three to complete the whole village because years ago we did the east side, so we took it all, taken all the stormwater from the east side, and treated it in the bioretention system along Depot Street and Morgan Road. Mm -hmm. Then we started looking into the middle. The stormwater comes down the church and from PH Edwards hits Main Street and sits there right now at the yeah. intersection. And then it wants to head east or west or you know, to the Johnson Street. And then the sinkhole project is doing. Once it hits the ravine, it goes to Trudell's property at West Main. Yeah. And it goes over a big waterfall, a bunch of stone. And there's no treatment after that. They have problems down there with 
um, erosion and backing up oh, yeah. the roads. Yeah. So anyway, so we don't know. That. That's that's a design project that we can talk to neighbors and the Loyal Valley Properties Association, all these you know, five, four or five landowners down there. But the other two could get accelerated because they're relatively small projects and we're already doing prospect street. This grant would pay for that bio retention in the loop. So right. could, that would be a good success there. Sylvain so has, we've been looking at it a couple of different ways about how to capture that stormwater that comes from the three houses. It pits the road, it kind of runs in the road, crosses the road at one point, heads towards that drop off on the north side of Sylvain, which is great now. <laughs> The guardrails are already grabbing and pulling those things down. I don't know if the roads slip in as much as it was probably installed in sand. So over time, gravity actually pulls guardrails. You don't really need erosion for that. But you know, 40 years down the road, guardrail that's only three feet, four feet deep has got to push out oh, yeah. just by gravity. So stabilizing that whole hill and being done with that road is would be the goal. Um, so anyway, what do we need to do? Nothing, that was nothing. So, <laughs> That's what do you want to say? So both three projects are just requested. I don't I have no idea if Andy's going to stick yeah. with DEC or not. But yeah, so it's just Peter submitted the application. Good job. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> so don't be surprised if you get, hey, do you guys want us to accept the award? What are you talking about? Yeah. 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 That's right. That's the level of It is. Well, and, 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 and again, that. Um, why it's important to have somebody to do all that work. I mean, what I have certainly learned from the years I've been here is Ron is really good at finding money. Good. You know, <laughs> I mean, he, he, he really is because there are lots of projects that you're going to be expected. Plus having, having the town have all the right policies and paperwork and everything you need to do. I mean, the, 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 uh, the sinkhole project that started out little, but we got a lot of state funding because we had everything in line. So when they made money available, we were sitting there at the front of the line saying, excuse me, we have a great project. Um, you know, and again, even when the states and the federal government make money available things, there are always more people looking for the money than there are, you know, than there's money to go around. So, so it is very fortuitous to have be in a position to be able to. No, that goes back to the, the net zero. There are so many small projects in that one project. But on what Andre said was exactly right. If you don't have that preliminary stuff, you can't even talk to the state. That's true. They, they want. To, they want. To. We have an idea. What do you mean? They they want to at least have a site plan or something. Right. Right. How much phosphorus right. you can take up? Yeah. 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 And now we have to, whether it sits on the shelf for ten years or we get it all done in one year. Like you were just saying, if you're got it all in place and the money comes up, we're ready. You're you're ready for it. You can say, "Oh yes, here comes a grant that looks like again, like looking at these three projects." Well, we've been trying to figure them out for a while. Water running. You hear it in the, water water. the media oh, all the time. Constantly. Right. right. Pollution of the lakes and stuff yeah. like that. So, yeah. so there should be money coming down the pike at some point. An annual town employee. There was a sheet. Oh, I think okay. I handed it out. Oh, he did. Okay, wait. The two percent people and the. Okay. Two percent. I don't know. I don't know. No, no, three seconds. Just a second here. Yeah. Oh, I can't. No. So does it really matter? No way. No, no. Ryan's in the union, so I. No, no. This is just town employees. This is the two percent increase for everybody. This isn't a union thing. So it. He's a very sensitive fellow. Just ask him. You need a tissue? Oh, yeah. You know, it makes a heck of a lot of difference when you can all get together in the same room. Oh, I just, I mean, it really is. It's just, oh, man. Well, there, there was some. Oh, okay. All right, Ron. I did. That's, I did. Like it. That's right. Okay, <laughs> just a second here. All right. Oh, the other thing is, you see, you put us all in the same room and there's too much paper. Too much paper. I know. The old days. Yeah, we heard okay. you have to pull it together. All right. Yeah, so it's one of the 
chance. See, this is one of those general things that has nothing to, you know, you have that choice you can make. I think. Oh, okay. It's not yeah. automatic unless you call it a five percent rate. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can do a D-dub. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So just true. That is the other direction. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, you heard that. <laughs> so that is a. That is a. Do you mind repeating yourself? <laughs> no. I make a motion we accept the FY 22 town employee wage update effective July 1st, 2021, at the two percent wage increase for the. Employees, high five employees. So let's right. not eligible. Yeah, uh, the eligible. Other right. people are fixed. Yeah. Yeah. Second. Okay. Um, um, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. Anybody abstaining? It doesn't have this light board on you. I said it after we approved it. Okay. Yeah, we did. I saw it earlier. Yeah. But we... Now I said that, I got a question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Too late. Sarah Patch is a town employee, not a contractor. Right. Interesting. Yeah, there's the choice between contractor and employee. And I don't know. People make careers out of that discussion. I don't know if you're familiar. <laughs> so anyway, in under federal law and state law, you have two choices with every body that works for you as select board, you have a choice of having an independent contractors and a contract. The library does it cleaning. You pay two hundred dollars a month or something to have a library clean mm -hmm. some local company. Or you have an employee. So when people can't satisfy the independent contractor rules, which are four or five very specific steps that they have to satisfy, then we have to have somebody in the building that's an employee. You don't have a you don't have a choice of having a Somebody yeah, that doesn't okay. need this and, and it's not an employee yet to uh, put them in a box. Yep. Oh. Then we do that, do go through that with that lady that was cleaning before. Yes. Yeah, so, well, some people don't want to be an employee, right? And they don't want to comply with those four or five yeah. things. Right. Yes. That uh, don't work for us. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And it's a tricky. It's a very complicated too sometimes. Yeah. 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 My wife does huh. it for UVM as a tax administrator, mm -hmm. and she does it. Every state and every country oh, that UVM is in, so she has to know all the different rules. Oh, so, awful. You know, from the room of, you know, we're working at home, I can hear her talking. I'm like, oh, you know, that, I couldn't do it. I just couldn't. Mm -hmm. And she has, she has fights with people because there's always some professor that wants to hire somebody in Pennsylvania that has, doesn't do the steps. Yeah. And where do they pay their taxes and all exactly. of this stuff? Some states, yeah. you can work in Florida, for example, and not pay Vermont anything, right. vice versa. But other states want it twice. New York, you pay yeah. double. Yeah. 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 New, York, yeah. New York wants your money if you're in New York, right? yeah. no matter where you work. Exactly. And then Vermont, they want your tax, you know, tax money. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, that everybody we have pay and we try to fit them in one of those two boxes. Yeah. And she fit better in the employee <clears throat> box. Okay. Moving right along. Oh, yeah. All right. Do we know what we're getting yet? We don't. No. Um, we had to register last week because every town has to register in the new state portal. Yep. Allison's handling that kind of stuff. Yeah. I asked all the departments and some of the committees to provide a list by last Thursday. So that's the list that you guys have in your packet. And I have, can I add something to it? I think that, I think it's open still. Okay. Because I talked something from the rec committee. Yeah. So I said the deadline just to try to get a corral. So it's open sure. as long as the board wants to keep it open. I'll forward. She sent it. Erica sent it to me and I'll forward it to you. Okay. Because okay. we don't. We don't know. Do we have a, a beginning of understanding what the guidelines for what you can do with the money? We are? Do. Yeah. So. Anything that you feel is recovery from COVID is eligible. The pay for some people is eligible. Probably firefighters are the closest in Hyde Park. Right. A lot of people just distanced telework or the office was locked or schedules were changed or whatever. You know, there's things at distance that didn't involve the hazard piece. You were hazard. Right. Front jacket being at the, the prison. Firefighters had to get up and close personally with everybody, regardless of their condition or, or vaccine. So, right. I 
couldn't really, when I was thinking of hazard pay, I couldn't think of anybody else who was working for the town that actually had the face to face forced interaction that is an employee other than fire. Well, I don't know. 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 I don't yeah. So, anyway, yeah. but that's one of the eligible. The other is water and sewer improvements. And what we just talked about, North Pike Park potentially with a decentralized sewer. Water and sewer? Does that seem weird? What was the reasoning for that? Uh, the federal government wanted to make sure that the resiliency of the uh, people is improved too. So, Got that it. you don't have to worry about your water and sewer while you're fighting the next pandemic. You got know, it. That reason. It's not a direct link. Yeah. Like uh, ventilation and preparing for yes. the next one. So exactly. preparing for the next one, recovering from the last one, yeah. water sewer broadband were the three things that they called out. Again, for telework and medicine and all of those things. What is the next pandemic supposed to be? When? What? Who knows? What? what? Then how can you prepare for it? No, that's what they said. Prepare for it like it's going to happen. Is yeah, prepare for what? The same thing. Yeah, sort of. any, anything airborne and highly yeah. transmissible. So once you go into lockdown, right, which is what the normal pandemic protocol is, you have to have your broadband, you have to have good services for transportation, water and sewer, you shouldn't have to worry about because you're going to be locked at home. You know, I think they're looking at it from a whole systems thing, not just a what vaccine do we need, that, that you do when it happens. So they're looking for a long-term lockdown. Well, right, another year. Yeah. I mean, it certainly showed the issues the schools have trying to teach kids at home. Yeah, so then that's the scary part. It's like, you're really going to lock down for another year? You don't even want to think about it. Oh like, my God. That's what the grand, yeah. that's what the grand money is for, is to try to get through the next one. So we all had to do it on the fly this time around, but they want us to at least have things improved to be able to do it again, which is right. kind of a right. you know, sad, not, not good thought. That, that's as far as I can remember it so far. And plus, you have until December 2024. Right. So and we're, we're going to get about how much? Uh, the, the lowest number I saw was just under 300,000. The county government has a, I'll put almost, if they don't give it to the side judges for regional yeah, planning, because well, of the to figure it out, right. Then we could get double that amount. And now, then you're talking about. It's almost too much. It's almost a problem. You know, well, it, well, it should be. You, you have to again, really work out to be fair and equitable. And how do you yeah, say no? Exactly. If you had ten thousand dollars, you could put it next to it and be done. Right. As one yeah. answer. Yeah. If you have two hundred or four hundred thousand. But again, it's it's the the thinking of the airborne. That's what the, you know with the the ventilation system here. What we've known we need to do forever up at the shop. What you want to do at the library. You know the places that are public where uh, people spend time, or you've got your employees, and you really need to you need to have decent air ventilation systems. I mean, to me, that's the sort of okay. When you take care of that, if you got anything left, then you can figure something else you want to do with it. But that's sort of clearly what you know. And 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 again, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with broadband. There's so much. There's so much money floating around right now that the feds have sent to the state that they're shipping out to just sort of go, okay. And then everybody gets hacked. So the end solution is going to be we're better to go back to index cards, right? I'd almost rather sometimes. <laughs> oh, I tell you, it's right. Uh, telling my kids that I had to read a book and use a typewriter and write my essays. Can't understand that. Well, they just do everything on that. Yeah. I paid somebody to do it. <laughs> some families had money, some didn't. Yeah. They had to do it the hard way. Exactly. <laughs> so, when will you know roughly when? So far, it seems like every. The money's supposed to be here in June. 50% oh. of the 230 or 80, whatever it is, is supposed to be here in June. The state of Vermont is stuck in their normal grinding of the wheels to try to figure out how to get it from A to B because they have to funnel it from the federal government to the towns. So that's 
what I don't know this is how long that will take. But it's put it into account, write a check, send it to the town. Yeah, every couple of weeks they come up with a we're gonna have a webinar because we made some more decisions and that kind of thing. But the big one is the county. So a lot yes. of towns yeah, and the other are, are recommending it goes to the town, not to side judges and regional planning. Let, let each town make those decisions. And you said 2024, you have December. Yeah, yeah, December 24th. Yeah, yeah, well, it is. But, well, that's right. But of course, you know, you think of some bigger areas outside of Vermont, they're big plus. Right. Yeah. So, I, yeah. so I'll just keep it okay. up here. Yeah, but it's a lot of yeah. Hopefully, a future guidance here through half your money. Exactly. The other guy is going to come in spring of 22. Go through another three webinars and figure it out. Yeah. Okay. So, orders and Order still at work. Oh, okay. right That's all I have on my list. Okay. I'm okay. Done. Orders. My battery's dying, so I'm going to have to have paper. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Orders. Still so, oh. I have to get some of this. Oh, wait. Yeah, I could do old fashioned orders. Well, not even old fashioned. I was going to get excited. I thought there were a bunch of them, but then it's just a. Oh, wow. 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 I use this front porch floor mattress. So yeah. I don't even know which one it was, was whatever you use for front porch floor. Mm -hmm. uh, it's old fashioned. But it is not a little bit of a good. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> I see recreation art. Erica wrote a really nice letter. Or short for the state. <laughs> no one did any. You know, yeah. money. Some of the fish and wildlife sites here. No, most of them are feet. He has stuff growing up. So I'm going to them. I went down and looked. And three leaves, sawtooth, and mowing an area the size of this building of uh, poison ivy. was going up in the air, coming back on it. And my arms were just. Stuck with it and was flat, being in 90 degrees weather and stuff. And I'm still digging stuff out of my eyes. That's why I'm putting my glasses out there. And uh, I get back to the shop and I told my supervisor about it. And he says, Take some take some alcohol and go over your skin just in case. But I don't ever have any reaction to it. I can okay, put right. stuff up and stuff like okay. that. Okay, all right, yeah. Never had any problem with it. But he said, oh, I did it anyways. We had alcohol, believe it or not, in our. In our office, <laughs> plenty of it. <laughs> and actually, it felt pretty good because once you went to the right off, off. Well, yeah. Right. yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Stepped up here. Yes, there you go. Okay. Progress. Okay. Now we're down to telework. That's a cute little picture. Do you happen to have that printed? It's my battery down. Oh, okay. here he comes. Oh, there we go. Here we got go. another one who's ready for us. There's, there's the whole thing. Thank you. This is what the state's proposing. No, there's two, there, yeah, there's two okay. things. There's an current state uh, telework policy, which is multiple pages, five, mm -hmm. five or six pages, something like that. And then I drafted a high part two page version to try to simplify it. Whether it does that or not, I <laughs> it never can get policy quite right. But I wanted to highlight the fact that it's not a light decision 
to telework. It should be a thoughtful decision. Uh, it's going to be allowed so that people know what the rules are, expectations, and the town can some checks and boxes before it happens. So who qualifies for this currently under this, this plan? Uh, qualifications probably is uh, the way that's written now. It is probably a town administrator, finance director, town clerk. I think are the three that would probably qualify for that. A in the library people probably won't because they're such a hands-on group at the library. But highway department probably not. <laughs> the, only, the only reason I say that is because every employee. Any, any employee, we have this happen with, two employee. with Ruth at the library uh, where they needed some time away from the facility and they were able to do tasks at home. So, you need child care or something like that? Or no, no, no let, let's say pick anybody, pick Ryan Nolan. Okay. So, Ryan Nolan, Nolan is the lead operator that fill in for Mark French. Mark French says, Regency has gone. I got a whole shitload of grants. Can you do this? And I'll let you do it at home because you don't you don't have the facility or, or quietness of the town garage. Uh, Would you allow Ryan to spend a couple days on grant applications because that's where he operates best? Oh, uh, okay. See. okay. See, but you know, we're, 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 doing it, okay. we're doing it right now with Brad. So when Brad became fire chief, and I think Susan might have had somebody had a conversation I, with yeah. Roland. Somebody had a conversation with him that he has downtime. No, he does 24 hour shifts sometimes and sleeps. There. He's got 15 or 20% of his fire chief duties report filing to the state, summarizing the fire call, doing the report that they want. Right. Those are going to take time for him to sit in front of his data and get it into something that could be submitted either to state select board. And he's doing that from Johnson. Gotcha. Yeah, because they talked about it. He said so. And he said, I, I could definitely do that. That would really be helpful if that's okay. Uh, we said, sure. sure. Yeah, sure. Of course. Okay. You know, so today like, we relocated up to like, White Scram or Camp up in Eden. And they have, you know, so I brought her there up in Eden. I brought her up there. We, were, we both were. She's working from there during the day, UPM, which is all telework right now. She is going back to the office on some minimal schedule. And it, it, was, it was seamless in, in that, but some places do not allow telework. It could be super confidential information, right, right. financial controls where you need three or four firewalls. You, know, you just do not want to take that work home with you. Exactly. Right. So there, that's why I'm saying it's not a light decision. We had issues during COVID because we tried to relocate Kim, Kristen, me, Allison, three librarians. Um, I think that was it. Everybody had to go home, and everybody was supposed to try to keep working. There are still employees that are not set up for good internet safety, or even in the capacity of their computer system. Right. So we're pulling those people back quick. That's pretty much the library staff. Amy has no internet in Lowell. Right. You know, Ruth has some bad connection on Garfield Road. So we're trying to, you know, she's trying to get them back to the library as soon as possible yeah. from all, mostly a practical perspective, yeah. but it just wasn't working well. Allison has some issues with Johnson's uh, internet speed, for example. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's gone. It was like when we had the other meeting here, we were trying to get the regional planning office to set up here. This building has to get it out. Yeah. So even when you're here, you think, oh, we're the town office. So part of our ARPA money that we're trying to get for the highway garage in here is a fiber line from the roundabout to this building with dedicated 100 100. Oh. So just to give you an example, this is a long story, but my house in Richmond has a fiber line going up the street. It's not dedicated. So I share that fiber line, which is 300, 300, pretty strong, from the village of Richmond to my house on the hill. And sometimes we go down a tent if all the people are um, carrying that one fiber. So you're still dividing that stream up, even though okay. when, pe when people are not in, I see my speed test go to 350. I'm like, that's unbelievable. It doesn't happen all the time. Yeah. 
unless you get consolidated to run a dedicated fiber to this yeah. secondary uh, emergency center here. So if we can at least have internet in that closet over there, we are having false alarms because the consolidated copper wire was giving the fire alarm company in, in Albany or someplace false alarms because it was in and out sometimes of the signal. So it figured that the alarm had failed. Fire the high, highway drivers have the same problem. So we upgraded that a couple of weeks ago because Homeland Security, you know, not Homeland Security, but security in general needs good alarm systems. And when you have a false alarm going off all the time, it creates havoc. You know, we have to figure it out. The alarm companies call us. So now we have Starlink, the new Jeff, what's his name? Elon Musk mm. system satellites. Oh, okay. so we have Starlink in that room with a redundant satellite connection to our copper. So when the copper fails, Starling takes over, so that never gives it a false alarm again. And we put that same system at the highway garage. But all these systems are based on, you know, just normal operations these days. You can't have normal operations, which is why the ARPA money comes in without good communication. And once you have failed communication, we almost didn't get training today with Mark French on the new culvert inventory data. So Mark's going to be uploading digital data on the town road network, but the person doing the training couldn't get a good signal. <laughs> so it's like, you can't even do the simplest thing these days because everybody's taking it from the cloud. Yeah. They don't bring, you used to bring paper to meetings. Yeah. Now I bring, now I know this is a cloud-based system we are using tonight. It has nothing to do with the town system, it's the cloud system. So anyway, all that stuff works into the background of how telework is COVID has pushed the you know, edges a little bit of what's normal and what people can do. Mm -hmm. You guys all want to have platforms right now. That's right. Okay. Well, redundancy doesn't do that. <laughs> phones that are not based on the internet. If your cellular system goes down, yeah. do you have a backup phone? Yeah. Can you imagine? The, the, wor the worst fear is the EMPs from an attack of some sort where they just destroy all electronics at once. Right. People would not know what to do. No, no, that's it. They're taking home. Earthquake, earthquake in your cell phone, you could probably survive. An yeah. earthquake without your cell phone. People would be scared, number one. They yeah. wouldn't know what to do. Right. People aren't self respecting Especially the younger generation that's all they've ever done is they, get they, on they, damn right. thing. That's right. They don't know anything else. Right. Right. They're damn have to learn it too. Yeah. 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 So we're rebuilding this redundancy, not just for telework purposes, but each facility that you allow the telework to go to should go through the same exercise. So security, redundancy, too much trouble, too much cost potentially, like to set people up. You know, there's all sorts of things that would go. Did you have the two cans and the string run over to the new house? <laughs> Wait and see. I'm just asking. You and see. <laughs> Simpler days. I, that's why I like to you. I said that right from the beginning. Yeah. Somebody wants to put some warfare on us and knock out our a blanket uh, over the uh, place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. But, but it's, it's the same that us do it back okay. today. It's, 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 right? Yeah. Man. Oh, I'm telling you, I might man get something you can't take, you can't give an answer without looking on that goddamn no. thing. No, my kids, it's terrible. That's that's I just want to give you the background for telework that's doable, but not without those kind of considerations because there is there is cost to it. You know, it's a loss to residents sometimes because you're you're forcing them to adjust to technology. I, was I work with Pete Gucci right now, and he is very basic. <laughs> but he is using email and we're getting through a subdivision process with him. He, you know, he's just online in the morning for some reason. I get this two word sentence question and I respond to it and wait 24 hours. And, you know, <laughs> there's no communication like, to the end. It's yeah, it's yeah. Email. but we're making it, you know. So, so when, when is everyone going to be back full time ever? Oh, everybody's back full time. They're right now, are you in the office now? No, no, you just asked two different things. Oh, I did. <laughs> Is everyone in the office yeah. currently? There we go. No. Yeah, nobody, nobody's fully in the office as far as whatever that means. Right. Wait, 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 wait. People are working off site today, and 
That's what the policy points out. There will be people working offsite all the time. We don't have space for them. Is one example. We're allowing it to happen is another example. And the service benefit potentially is more with the telework. Like Brad, if he had to sit in that office when he has tons of hours up at Johnson, is a, is a good example of how he can get work done just fine at Johnson when he has downtime at NEMS. Yeah. Versus having to find that same time sitting at his you know, chief chair right. in the station, which he may not be able to hold because he's, he's elsewhere. And the town clerk office is still not open. So, the, the lobby's open. What did she do last week? Before she left, she was on vacation. Oh, that's right. yeah, she, she said she opened it, which I can't understand. Lobby open to the public. Lobby open. Lobby open. Door was locked. First door was locked, which people did not like. But, but uh, yeah, they couldn't even get into the lobby. And this part I don't understand. People that are not vaccinated should request that they wear the mask. Well, the mask is to protect us, not them. So what? Well, it's a two-way street. No way. And then so why does they have to wear a mask? I think it's recommended. They don't have to, and she's not asking. So if somebody comes in without a mask, yeah. it's fine. She's a put. I haven't put the sign yet, but it says. Rec I think we talked about having a sign that said recommended, recommended, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Anyway, so you really yeah. should not make it required without the select and, and, board and, 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 making it and, mandatory. And, and a lot of places are saying recommended. Yeah, yeah. and if I'm not vaccinated, wearing a mask does protect me. Only, only the. Yeah, 95 masks. That's the only mask. Ones. The ones that we wore here. The loose pity no. ones. No, no, no. That's the only one. They, they, they it is the N95. That's, that's what they that, required that, us to wear in the. Yeah. Um, that's the only yeah, one. Yeah, that's the only one that protects you and me. Oh, really? These cloth ones we wore, these uh, the, the fiber ones we wore. Yeah, the face mask thing with the guy smoking a cigar. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. the good. Yeah. 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 Are in, I, and and the, again, so so. What do we as a as a as a town want to have for? And again, if you start thinking of the teleworking, if everybody that does all the work that they do for the town suddenly demanded office space, we'd have to double the size of this building, because you just don't realize how many people are doing things. Are the dog guy? So what what's different? Now and it was the week before COVID. That's what I'm wondering too. I'm a, a hell of a lot different in the world. Well, no, in the what people in have the 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 because people have learned what you can do. Okay, and the habit of just um, lots of people when they when they come in and we can drop back a couple of years here, they just come in to chat. That's really what they come in for. Okay. Well, okay. Well, yeah. no, 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 they they just come in to chat. And what's yeah. changed in this past year is they think the dog licenses are perfect. You don't have to come in and do that anymore. Lots of the applications and things that people need to do, you don't have to come in and do that. No, but I'm, that's a, that's a town, different issue. We have a town office, and I feel like we're providing services for okay. taxpayers and. People like my dad has no idea how to get online and do anything, and he's one of those guys that does come down here and hand his tax check. You see, that's a divider right there for me, is what you're saying. The ones that don't have that technology, uh, some I've heard the words, I'm too old to, to, to do that, I don't understand it. And they just don't take the time to yeah, and that's okay. and cheat, sure. and it is okay. Yeah. But I, I'm just trying to see where it's beneficial I mean, everything I've sent to Ron, he's responded to to me in a reasonable mm -hmm. amount of time, and I see that too. Oh, I'm just trying to figure out what what's most effective. 
and meets the needs of the majority. Now, I, I'm going to say something. Um, don't take this any. I'm just putting it on the table. I've had, and I'm not throwing the muscle to it too. I don't know why my shoulder is always wider than anybody else's. I don't know why. <laughs> I've had three employees, key employees, talk to me that their job is harder because Ronald's not in the office. Because they come in and ask and zoning questions. That's not my environment. I have no idea. It takes time to but I've talked to those people. Yeah, to do that. Yeah, because she I figured out what's going on too. Okay. Uh, so it's it's not a one way story. Okay, no, I'm just telling you what I know. No, I'm just, no, I'm not saying, I'm just saying that, that you can't say that and not expect I'm just saying, I'm just saying what right. I do know right. that, that people right. has come to me and said that their job is harder because uh you can't go and say wrong, what's it? Right. You know, you have to wrong, what's Which it? Which I mean, I don't I don't think I don't I certainly yeah. wouldn't want to propose a uh, uh a uh a telework policy that people are never in the office. Yeah, I don't but I'm saying that. you know, I I don't I don't think there's any the interest in that. No. I needed I came in today because I needed to be here. Oh yeah, it's well, some things you can do, but yeah. you know what I'm, you know what I'm right. saying. Is, but but it doesn't mean you have to be again and and again thinking thinking forward. Okay, Ron's gone, Allie's gone. Okay, it's all different people. Um people have learned that they can work at home and some things you're gonna be able to do better at. Or quiet in your office well, because you're not going to be interrupted and make some money and everybody can work from home. No, this is that <laughs> saying that that doesn't work. work. Well, I think we, you know, see, so are you so you're an all or nothing? You have to be here five days a week or. I think days. people should be in the office every day. Every someone, person, someone, no, yeah, okay. someone yeah. needs to be there. Every I don't, day. I don't disagree with that. Because but that's not the same as saying that every person has to be in the office every day. No, no. I don't. See so I, I think to answer your point, the town clerk's office is what I call the front office. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they, yeah. they yeah. have yeah. to post hours and be open for the public, and that's what she. That's the change she made last week. Okay. So prior to last week, there was a lock on the door. People would right. expect to do their. And this is my taxpayer building. I yeah. could do it and turn the knob, and nobody would answer. Yeah. You have to bang on the door. Important. And so village and water is the same thing. Right. But so the building is still closed. I think they're following what Kim does. I think. Okay. Well, that door is locked. They're not open. <laughs> right. So last week, last Wednesday, Kim decided after getting ready to go on her vacation and talking to me about masks and other things to open the lobby so people can walk in during her eight to four, right? Seven thirty or I think well, they get there. She knows, right? And they can get service from talking to the village or the clerk, just like they used to. So that's all back to normal. Oh, okay. So that's all back to normal. What she is, and this is this. I think I had trouble talking to her about this, but it was her her concern that we're not quite over this thing yet. There's still risks. There's still variants. There's still high risk people working in the office. Mm -hmm. So how do you control? The very small workplace that she has, which is two two computer terminals for the ball. So we made some adjustments to reduce the risk of having four or five or six people in that one little small place by the copier. And it should be online by this Friday. And I'm trying to work with Kim to figure out what her stress was. And it was, from my perspective, it was Kim doing things she wasn't supposed to do. So last week, before she, before she left, I said, you need to stop doing what you're doing. She was trying to help people because I wasn't there. And that was not how it was set up. Um, Email or phone call, you get an immediate yeah. response, even if they have to call from my phone in my office. She was trying to help people walk through the zoning files or answer the zoning questions. And then when she couldn't, she was calling me. Um, that was, that's why she was so frustrated. We're having the same problem with the listers. We went to the town assessor and she was starting to do the same thing for the assessors. And we I told her, stop doing that. Matt Reed is the select board appointed assistant to the town 
make the system work the way it's supposed right. to. People will get that read in either very quick. There's no delay. As soon as that person walks through and they want to put your throat, you know, hand on my throat, <laughs> they can do that. And right. They do it either by the phone or email, or I make an appointment and I come in. So the, the service level is just as high or better than it was with a structured, everybody has to be in the office, nine to four, or whatever the schedule is. And because of COVID, we figured out that we can make it work. 100% of zoning permits are done online. Right. People can apply online, pay online, get the permit online, and never set a foot in a town office. Yeah. For the, and I had two or three cases, really. Not Brian's word is pretty key, which is majority. Three or four cases of zoning that people needed to see me or help walk through a permit process and made appointments and we dealt with it. But so, they should have done it with COVID. Really? Right. I mean, you know, they need to talk about it. They really should call and say, when are you available? <laughs> yeah. So that, that's, where, I mean, that's where we're trying to talk about telework, needing to have the answer to the face to face. You have to have that in your permission to do telework because everybody should have face to face. If if I have a new person come in, let's say uh, you, you all decide to split up zoning, just an example. And you want to start making transitions to other positions, but we need a dedicated zoning person. I'm the only one in, in Hyde Park that can train that person. There is nobody else qualified to train that person. So I would be here full time as long as that whatever that person's schedule was, because it won't be full time, 15 hours a week probably. But I would be there for that person because it's impossible to do that type of thing. Right. Take them around the roads, you know, show them the zoning files, the vault upstairs, now, you know, stuff that they have, you know. So there are situations, even under a telework policy, where you need people here to do certain things. All that stuff has to be thought of before you do it. We didn't have time to think about any of this stuff with COVID. Go home and figure it out. So the town, the town governor, or whatever, but all the employees in a very difficult position, and some are still in that trying to figure it out mode. Not because we have to continue it, because there were benefits that came out of it. Right. And 95% of the people came along for the ride. There are 5, 10% of people that still want to come down, sit in the lobby for half an hour, <laughs> and tell weird stories, which have nothing to do with taxpayer money, but it is a service to that person. Yeah. They lost in COVID. Right. All those people yes. that want to go down to the paper check. Say hi to Don. Say hi. <clears throat> we did have we had people doing the circuit of no business, but taking, want to see you. Take, yeah. yeah. And, 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 yeah. and that's important. That is very important. Okay. <clears throat> and you don't you don't want to eliminate that. No. But when you're again, Dave, you're talking about efficiency, time management. Okay, that you know how how much of employees' time do you want to have being social for the community and, and again not saying it's none of it but how do you so you're you're, you're saying uh, if that person worked from home two days a week those same people and it'll come in the three days a week they're here and do the same thing yeah but they'll only be well, there's, three there's days a week that. instead of five days a week if you're really looking for a high efficiency on your money that you authorize all your staff to pay you have them tell you how that mix goes that's the my proposal if you have anybody that says, "Hey, I want to telework sometime," maybe I've got yeah. maybe I've got a new baby, and I, and I don't want to take thirteen weeks out of my heart. Right. I'll, I'll do two days a week teleworking and take the other three with my baby. Yeah. Is that okay? Right. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm right. But you have, that community, you have to have that conversation because if you say, "No, we want you here," we we're okay with you teleworking. Those are all discussions. Each job is going to be different, you know, and it's not easy. That's why the this yeah. telework thing is not the easiest. No. It was easy in COVID. Get out of here. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, everything's shut. Right. But now that there's some, for me personally, because over 50% of the work that I do doesn't involve people. It involves sitting in my computer, doing research, mm -hmm. coming up with policy, right. editing things, quiet time stuff. I could, I could be sitting at home for two hours straight. And the only reason I know I have to move is because my hip mm -hmm. starts to hurt. I knew my new hip will actually get sore at like an hour and a half. And you know, I have yeah. to stand up. That's what I'm saying. I'm not for it, right? But I'm not against it, right? Now. 
yeah. that there's so many different avenues. Yeah. That so how do you, you, you really look at it before you can make the? Well, I think you want to be you want to be in a position where the select board supports the policy. And if you can't get to unanimous, get four out of five and let Dave. But anyway, so that's that's the goal. <laughs> that's the goal is to talk about it and have it comfortable because it, it could happen again. The telework isn't well, just about avoiding the office, it's about how do you get work done efficiently. It, yeah, yeah. And and still again, what what people expect and and it's as as we see some younger people in town taking over, you know, volunteers and all that sort of stuff. It's telling me there's lightning outside. Um, you know, they're 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 much more totally attuned. They wouldn't they wouldn't even think of coming in to see the town administrator about a zoning board. I mean, you know, it just it wouldn't even why would I do that? <laughs> you know, why why would I go to the town office to pay my water bill? I mean, you know, they're just so it, it it's a division, and how how do you how do you acknowledge all of it and come up with a with a balanced with a balanced policy? And I think a key, I would think, fortunately, being small, it's it's pretty easy to come up with the you know with the flexibility that that you that you need. Of course, you know, Kim, the town clerk, she. We can't tell her what to do, um, but it, but again, and and her her concerns are so, and and again, people got used to having to make appointments to come in, but I know, and again, hear from people that it's like that's not the most user friendly way to do it. Well, okay, so if somebody just walks in, if there aren't two people sitting there, you ought to be able to let them go and do the work. You know, because a lot of times, sometimes people come in and it's a couple of hours, but sometimes people just need to come in and look up something real fast and take them 15 minutes. Great. Well, that's fine. You know, do that. So how to how to have that kind of flexibility, but but manage the the concerns that folks have about making sure that they're, you know, that they're safe. The other, the other overriding thing, because it's all new, really. Is to listen to concerns and try to figure out if it's fixable. So, yeah. for example, Kim was, I mean, I'm using Kim because I actually had this conversation with her. How do, you, how do you get people better service that's more efficient for taxpayers because you're not spending money elsewhere? One of the biggest problems they have in the office is people wanting to come in, look at the list of cards because there's you saw the big rack of every yeah, person has a big rack of every individual property as a list of card. On that list of card, it is number of bedrooms, square footage, photo. I think you've probably seen it. Regular tub and jacuzzi tub. All that stuff. I got them on that. I just thought I'd bring it. All that stuff. <clears throat> um, up in, and hopefully by the end of this week, it's resolved. People will be able to go online, go to the home page, pull up the parcel data, and pull up that list of card. Oh, it okay. will be one of the best because that's a physical manual thing that the person has to get in the car from Morris Tower, okay. drive over, look at one card, take a copy of it, and go back to Morris Tower to finish their legal work. Yeah. And it interrupts the office flow a little bit. Sure. Where is yeah. the card and all that stuff? Yeah. So that's what I mean by it. So learning is what is it happening now that can be solved some other way and keep doing that. You know, two weeks ago or three weeks ago, we went to online building. Never had that option before. I'd be doing all the zoning stuff and say, Dave, can you come down to the office and drop off a check? You know, like the 1950s, it felt like. Yeah, yeah. Dave didn't have the dollar seventy-five option of not leaving his house and mailing it for 50 cents or whatever. You know, he didn't have those options. He had to get it. So that, I'm just saying, that's how I'm looking at the policy. Like, if you have an issue with anything regarding town service, quantify it and, you know, look at it and see if there's a better way to do it. And if that means, you know, the select board wants town staff to make time for those friendly visits, make sure the door is unlocked is a good start. <laughs> make sure somebody's there to say hi and greet people friendly and then get them the answer they want. So that's kind of what, that's, if they don't have to come here because it's cheaper and more efficient for them to stay home and go online and do it the same way, then their day is better. 
So you're, you're kind of got a double benefit, if you will. We're more efficient, they're more efficient. You do lose kind of the forced interaction of the older days where everything had to come to the town floor. You do you do lose some of that. We've lost it, we'll never get it back. I see pros and I see some pros and cons to it. So I think there's definitely pros and cons. That's why if you make bad decisions in your telework, it can go really bad. So let's say, for example, a new town administrator comes in, doesn't know anything about nothing. That person better be here in the office to learn everything they can about the town of Hyde Park. Very, very hard to do that for base information. So I would, the policy says no teleworking for anybody for the first six months. I would say that probably should be flexible. When you achieve your capacity, you can go telework. Two different things. Don't yeah. just base it on yeah. time, but base it on the capacity to do it. Right. Then, someone can come in with a lot of experience and in three months be in a great shape. Yeah. So and somebody the, could be a year and a half. And this the last done. thing that's in the back of the policy is how do you monitor the performance of so that's people, what I was so when you're right, 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 right. so when you right. So when you when you want to know how well people are doing or how whether they're there there. So UPM has a uses just Microsoft Teams. And when you log on to the cloud and say, I'm here, it's morning. Your name comes up and you get a green dot. That means you're interacting with your computer. If you stop interacting with your computer, you go to yellow. And, yeah. go to two. and, and how long was that? Day? If you're not working on your computer, if you're not in front of your computer, yep. then it goes to yellow. And how long of a shutdown time? But not long. It's not long. It's, it is not long. You, you, you leave that. If I go to the bathroom, I come back. It's, 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 barely, it's <laughs> barely a minute before I recognize that you're not in the rack. Yeah. It's very quick. It's very quick. But it's based solely on how much interaction you have with the device. Yeah. You're, you're logged in and you're working in you're doing your work. How about, how about customer <laughs> satisfaction? Yeah. So, so what, what, what I'm saying? Oh, go ahead. No, I, no, I hear you. So what Dave said is true and what a lot of the zoning people Told me they would they would it would not work zoning was how to hurt the permit cost. it would not work for them from a customer satisfaction perspective if they had to wait three days for an email return. That's unacceptable. So if, if they if like well, a little story of Pete Cooter, you know, he uh, emails me in the morning, I email him later, and I may not get the response the next day. But he's not waiting the second, third, or fourth day to say. The forms online or on the LTV. Yeah. So there's a certain level of promptness yes. and accuracy. So you could be prompt and misguide somebody. So it's a double edged service tool. And if people are getting their answers, whether I just answered, I know, answered an email today because I couldn't say yes or no, and that person's answer is let's, let's them go forward, is way better than having them show up between nine and four. To hopefully, I'm there to get an answer. So those are just two extremes. Those are, that's kind of how I see the town offices services going. With somebody in the face when they walk in anytime during posted hours, they get a face. Anything else that they need is just as easy. Right. It might be an email, it might be a text, it might be a phone call, but that telework entity has to be totally accessible when they're teleworking. They cannot have this. Black, you know, of this that they we don't know. You know, I don't know. We heard from yeah Rajetsky for forty eight hours. That's a failure of customer service. So, 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 what would be the accepted time if somebody did call you wrong to get back to an answer? I if I if I miss my emails for more than an hour, that's unusual. Because oh, I get my phone. So I'll see if I'm actually monitoring my phone, it's instantaneous, like sits right there. But there's no way that it should go more than six hours would be long for, for a response, either from a phone call or an email. Because once you go past that point, that person is waiting for an answer. That's how I see it. They didn't just write an email to say, hey, they said, I need some information from you to go to my next step. And if I can give it to them in six hours or less for the same day for sure, then they can go on to their life. But 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 some things, I mean everything has got an exception, but some things six hours is way too long to get an answer back. 
Uh, not only email. Email is the difference. So you have different ways of communicating. If somebody texts me, it's almost immediate. Wouldn't want you know the tools for communication. Emails are not expected to be immediately responded to unless they have an exclamation mark or high priority on them. And you can fix that. If I see something come through with an exclamation mark, red, high priority, it's just like they call it. But if I get an email and I have, I'm looking at 50 to 75 emails a day that all need a response, that takes time. So it is possible that somebody might have to wait until we get through that. Yeah. So it's not, it's in the texting. Which, which isn't, is it, you know, is it any different than if you're sitting here in the office? Yeah, but you didn't answer right then. Not necessarily. Not at the end of the day. You don't, you don't, I don't, I don't need those kind of hours to no. say that. But yeah. What I, well, it may be information that he has to look up and he has to figure out. For yeah. So, I mean, there's lots of, there's lots of ways to skin that cat the response time. But people have to communicate that too. If I get a general email with, can you look at this document and get back to me? There's no time for them on that. But I'll try to get back to them within that, you know, daytime period so they can move on with their stuff. If somebody texts me or if they put a high priority on them or they call my cell phone, then they get an immediate response. They don't, there's no waiting time on those options. But an email is a different animal. It's like, right? I've seen people <clears throat> get emails and text messages and totally read them wrong just the way it was worded. Mm. And there's a meaning or that can be lost in those um, where a personal interaction um, is, is, yeah, it's better. It's, um, you see the people's face, you see the, um, their action, their reactions and stuff. And, and I think a lot of people, especially the older generation, have based their rapport on, yeah. on uh, yeah, that face-to-face -face -face com yeah. conversation. And sure. I, I, the only thing I could see and what I keep coming up in my mind is um, Ron says yes to somebody on a permit or something, and they take it and blow it out of the uh, proportion. And next, you know, there's some legal matter going on, and it, you know, with it, you know, that's just that's what I'm kind of seeing as a flag coming up in in my head that uh, um, where you can, uh, you want an example. Yeah, well, if you're just saying yes on a permit, I mean, it's like, but they, the only, I would think you say yes on a permit after you've got all the paperwork and everything's done. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to, yeah, okay. I, I'm trying to think of uh, of a good example. Uh, well, I'll give you a good example. So, uh, if I had to guess a number, uh, all the 3,000 people that I've practically met everybody in town over 10 years, right? There's probably a dozen people that I would say definitely like face-to-face -face and they communicate better face-to-face. -face. I've been totally surprised by about 90% or more of I Park residents that I had never had any conversation with before that called me up and said, how do I do something? I have access permit, zoning permit, fireworks permit. They had no idea how to, what telecommuting was, where I was, how well they could deal with it. The web, but they communicate some difficulty, right? And then they got over it. They they learn they learn just like everybody else did that texting me an image of a zoning permit application was something they knew how to do. A lot of, a lot of men for some reason like texting over anything else. <laughs> I just I don't usually get texts on females for some reason, but men they, they, like to, they like to take a picture and text me images stuff that I would never even thought of before COVID as a way to communicate, but they attach a photo, they attach an application. Yeah, I kind of print it out and mess with it to get into my system. But so anyway, people learn very quickly is what I was surprised at, how quickly people learn that email was okay for this purpose or texting was okay, or a phone call to get an appointment for me to come to the office or the house is okay. Texting used to be considered somewhat rude, right? Like you would never yeah. really do business text texting, but That's now right. it is okay. Like yeah. you said, oh, yeah. people are doing it more and more. Before, I would never think of texting someone to talk about business because I feel like texting is more personal, like a friend thing. But a lot of I'm getting a lot of text messages yeah. at work. A lot, well. of, a lot of contractors that are busy during the day will text. will will call me yep. and say, "Geez, I got this application. I, how do I get it?" Because they're busy. You know, yeah. there's eighteen different ways. I say, "Take a picture and text." I can do that. 
So I get that a lot because it's in it. I have to come to the office. I don't have to worry yeah. about going on the whole email system. Yeah. 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 Work anyway. That's certainly right. It's, it's true with texting, as you know. Yeah. yeah. If you so all those technology, technology things yeah. are really rolled yeah. into this one policy yeah. because if any of those aren't yeah. working for somebody, you have to have a backup plan getting a face to face with them. You have to have that part of your your plan. You have to know how that's going to be done. Right. It's me needing to sign something and get it in the house in the right light to take a picture <laughs> to text to Ron who could text to the state something we had to get done. <laughs> it says, oh, wait, it's a little off. Okay, let me take another picture. Yeah, right. It's like, okay. No parking. Okay. 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 So, so you were mentioning about the system. I, I wasn't aware of it. That monitors how much interaction you have with the computer and stuff like that. I think that's a great tool. Yeah. Um, who monitors that? Who gets the report on that? On uh, Microsoft Teams, you have a group of people generally. So I monitor, I monitor work. Yeah. yeah, supervisors, employees, yep. whatever. You give permission to people to be in the group. Yep. When you log in the morning, let's say, we usually get online, both of us, about 7 30. Between 7 30 and 8. I don't have a green light, but Melody does. She goes, Yeah, I'm going green. And that opens up her computer, video, phone, to anybody else in the group. And everybody else can see everybody else's green dot. So it's almost like you're meeting there. Mm -hmm. And Microsoft Teams have a record of that. If you had to pull a record of see green dot. I never had to pull the record. Now, the other side of the coin, four o'clock, does it say closed? No, that's the, other, that's the that's part of the problem. You have to have good skills. Sure. No, but you, you have to have good skills because what happened to me personally is almost seven days a week during COVID. Yes, that's right. What I'm saying. So it just you know I haven't used yeah, vacation sorry. time. I haven't used holiday time. I just it, it just it's there's so much stuff going on that's digital. It has totally blurred. Right. But I see it. I see too many benefits to that for some reason. The only negative is I'm losing my PTO, my time off. So I'm, yeah. So every week we go to buy phone loss, 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 because I just I feel like there's a there's a system that's developed during COVID where I'm accessible. Too people, much. People, oh, right. But people appreciate it, right? Yeah. And then see, see, things move better. They, for example, Father's Day. I just did not want to deal with the computer. I was tired. I didn't want to shut it off. This morning, I'm like, holy crap, people were, you know, they had like 15 emails that needed responses this morning. I said, like, how did that happen? That was like one day. I'm not trying to keep up with stuff. So there's a almost a public training too to yes. get to your point. That's what I'm so if you dial back, let's say you dial back and say, Regensky, we want you to start taking vacation time, we want you to have fixed hours. That's possible because on Teams, you'd say, okay, here's a new deal. Here's Teams. I'm green. I'm not green. People I'll log in or call or whatever. But for some reason, I just, the system wasn't set up. I played with Teams a little bit, but I'm a big team. It's Allison and I. Right. Okay, trying to do all the day to day stuff. You know? Okay, say, say you did take a vacation. If somebody did log in, does it say that Ron is out of the office until? To be ready. If you, if I'd be part of the group, but I'd be red. Oh. And you can put a no usually. And you can do it on an office reply email. Yeah, but you know you're red. But I don't know if you took a day off to go to doctor appointment or took two weeks vacation in Florida. No, I'd be, I'd be inaccessible well, maybe, through Teams. It's all right. access. I'm inaccessible through Teams. It would be anyway if you took a vacation and someone were applying and on his voicemail and on his. If you send them an email, you'd get an automatic response that runs out of the office and don't. The email is an automatic response you can do. The yeah. phone system, you have to update. Like Kim does our general box. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'll say that. The office is closed on Monday, you know, July 4th or whatever. But so how do we know the, the computer is at home with the data that they're accessing is safe? And cannot be corrupted in some way or some not. It's up to whatever that they got to prove that they've got some sort of a safety. Yeah. So a tech group does, which is what we have a July one date coming up for renewal of their terms. They monitor all of the town's equipment and they make sure that all this malware is up to date, virus is up to date. The, the open 
channel, I guess you'd call it, is like a firewall system. So this is a town? Yeah, it's okay. all town. We don't, we don't have any employee working on personal stuff, except every cell phone in Hyde Park is a personal cell phone. The town has never bought anybody a cell phone. So we've always expected yeah. by what expectation, if you're an employee, you're going to bring them a cell phone. Hmm. So that's a, sometimes they don't do that. They make some kind of, that's another story. But I say there's things, there's things that have been facilitated COVID because people right. have jumped in. You know, everybody has joined together on this stuff, tried to figure out what the public needs are, and trying to figure out how to be responsive as well as efficient. And it's a learning curve. That's why that's, I keep on saying this, but yeah. whatever you do when you have people working off site, you have to know what's going on. You have to monitor, you have to tweak the system. And if you're getting feedback of a negative story from anybody in the community, drill into it a little bit because it's usually just a couple of weeks. You know, those lister cards online, I didn't even realize that Kim was feeling the, the pressure from that until I heard that she was trying to answer zoning questions. And I said, What else are you doing that we, we could help? And then that was the lister solution. So now her static of people walking in without, you know, taking up time from other projects or whatever, it will be reduced quite a bit. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised the way the dogs have gone, the, the vital records, the state of Vermont taking more town clerk things into Montpelier. The clerk's offices are really not going to be doing what they used to do. This will be two, a new office type thing. I haven't figured out where it's headed. I keep joking with Kim. It's like, you're probably lucky if they don't take dog licensing because at some point there's going to be a state dog license. And yeah, exactly. People will go online for that and you won't have any reason to go to the clerk's office. By the end of this summer, we will have online payments. All the land records will be online back 40 years, hopefully. Lifts cards are online. All the zoning stuff's online. So, so you're saying at some time we could reduce staff? I think hours are an issue. I don't think this is just. Yeah, no, I'm just talking. No, about that. That. Yeah, you're yeah. carrying it out to the next logical question. Yeah. What exactly is going to go on that's going to require? We already saw the writing on the wall a little bit when we did the deck chairs. Okay. We saw that coming. So we mm -hmm. went the two people, full-time people for that face of Hyde Park, which is Krista and Ken right now. Hard to keep five days open with less than two people. Right. Right. So the, the option I've been trying to get Ken to do this for years is to go to four days and maybe appointments on Friday when she has to come in for a mayor's license or something. That, that that is very doable at this point. Now, Kim has her own way of doing things, and she likes to be helpful, and she likes to. Right, so right. She, if she was really able to fine tune her duties and really make the listers do their work and the zoning do their work, right? You know, she probably has a good four days plus the appointments. But but right now we want the service open. Of what you started with, yeah. I like my office hours be for people to come in when they want. And but if we start posting that it's open. Or like, I can only well, that's her, that's her choice, but I'm just saying yeah. that's an example of how this, all this stuff is actually having an impact on the town budget because we're actually putting some of that money that we have for Ken to do the yeah. Lister card into our consultant. It's a cost of $1,000 a year for them to convert that one patent mm -hmm. to a digital system. Yeah. No, I, I don't <laughs> think down the road that uh, your job goes to three days a week. I'm not proposing that. I'm just saying I can see it. Happening as a technology, as a technology advance, you think even not, huh? Well, if, if he's that much more proficient at home, they don't have to come in and deal with the public. Well, true, but everything's online, and everything's online, and they're doing these these uh, zoning applications online, everything online, all day. Instead of Ron spending four or five hours talking to somebody like he did me when I went to the goddamn permit, <laughs> I can do for everybody. That's yeah. true. Yeah, but still, I mean, yeah. Ron, he is wrong. Well, I'm not saying they, but no, no. They, 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 you got a great point. I've tried to figure out how, and this is really a planning commission discussion too, how do you make the zoning regs self service almost? Mm -hmm. We're getting closer, and actually, Eric Williams at the last planning commission meeting, and I didn't realize he had said this until I listened to my head again. He said, what so if we make that change we're talking about tweaking the uh, public hearing process with the drb if we make that change what why do we need a drb 
So what we were trying to do with the planning commission is try to figure out how can anybody in Hyde Park go to its town website, because that's where it has to start. Click off a bunch of things. I'm Dave, I'm building a deck, and have that process of yes, no, yes, no, and then we'll submit your 50 bucks. And I never even know we're there, right? Yeah. So what happens now, we're almost there. We're with this online payment, we're almost there. People can go online, get the form, text it or email it. <laughs> go online, go, you know, go online, pay the fee. Kim tells me a fee came in, which you would do with paper check anyway. And I know the application is complete. But this process is simple enough for somebody can actually go through. We haven't mastered that yet. Yeah. And then with his pay online, Jane can call you to any pay. Right? No, she she has an email. Yeah, she's getting the ACH notice and then she's telling her something. Yeah. Yeah. There is a communication thing, but I'm saying we're getting that part. I tried last summer to upload a new form for the highway access permits. So if you go to the highway page now, you see online 1111 form. It is an online form. Fill it out online, no paper, hit enter, attach a picture of your site plan if you want. I get an email. Called job form. Oh, that something was uploaded? Yep, job form received the application from Mr. Smith. I downloaded it and they never came to the office and I had any questions, I called. So you're I think you're right. There's a, there's a certain amount of efficiency. There's still a process problem we have because the yeah. process is multiple step and it takes time to get through it. But there is some efficiency where hours could go down for certain jobs. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Because the system that we're coming out of is based on in your face, hands on right. paper workshop. Paper, yeah. COVID switched it to digital. And now we're doing the next step is on, which is online self service, filing stuff, which will get easier for people. So their life is easier. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to say it's a whole new world, but it's definitely it's accelerating awesome. the transition to the that. Change, right? Yeah. Right. You know, COVID definitely pushed everybody to think about these things and get it easier for people oh. because things. You couldn't get to the office, so how would we do? Right. I was just saying, but you, have to do you, yeah. you can, I can come home from work at midnight and make out the form, you know, and mail it to you. And, True. You know, and, uh, I had a conversation with a select board member the other day, Scott Griswold. Sure. Yeah. Um, so he had, he had a question about grading work or something like that. I don't know. Basically, he wrote, writes a long email. This road is not, you know, needs some attention immediately. It's the worst it's been for you. So I said, Mark French and I work pretty well together. So without even calling Mark, he sent me an email really late. So I wasn't going to get back to him. Heck no. What's going on? Mark has not go to plan for grading tomorrow. So I didn't get back to Scott in the morning. Call Mark. You know, we're doing it now. <laughs> and Scott sent me an email up in the sub. It had no text to it. It just said thanks, Ron. Had nothing to do with me community, but it was like one of those things where Scott had a question. Mark took right, the question and did it right. without me even getting that chance to talk to him. And he sent me a thing. So I called him up and we just talked. You know, and I called because Cricket Hill was getting bad up there. And I, I called him and I said, uh, what are your plans today for grading? And uh, he says, Well, <laughs> um, Jason should be right on Cricket Hill right now. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> there are there's some things that work sort of uncover that don't that work well. Right. So I called Scott. I said, Scott, so how's it going? Because the B road is a oh, yes, it's a project. And he's oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, I just was wondering what was gonna happen. We had house people in April and May, now it's June because Matt Reeves back up with projects that love people. But he talked about his COVID experience with Curtis Lumber. And he's telecommuting still. And he's working till midnight some nights because that's when he just feels like he can get a lot of stuff done later in the day. Hence why you get the email late. Yeah, right. <laughs> you said that as the so I'm working at 10 o'clock. So everybody else. So if he's asked the question, what are you doing? In other words, I'm oh, sort of in the hybrid mode. I have to be here. I'm working, we're just talking about it, you know, trying to figure this thing out. It was, yeah, things have really changed. Now, Scott was, I, I don't really know him, but he's kind of traditional, he definitely hard worker, yep. you know, very efficient, yep. thoughtful person, right? 
So he, he said, that it's working for me. He never thought, that, you know, it, but there are examples of people that are feeling like it's working for them with the risk that it's, they have to be able to handle it. Work in the midnight, work at all night because you can't. Those, some of those things could be a negative impact on the employee. Yeah. You want it to be a positive. You want it to be positive for for the residents and the employees and not negative. People with kids, I think, with younger kids sometimes working from home is harder. Not that with my work, because I worked with girls that had younger kids. So we have some they people were wanting to get back to work. Some people want to get back to work. That was me. Show. I'm back at the office and I love. And I'm coming back my kids are teenagers. So I just need to get the hell out of my house because I need to see people. <laughs> so some, people some people are like, right. like that. Other people yeah. are like, you know, for me personally, pretty much independent position. We don't have the community discussions about a decision. I, you know, it's me talking in my head or calling one of you, you know, whatever. It's not a, it's not one of those collaborative things, but there are some jobs that are collaborative that you must get back. Oh, I have to. Too. I didn't have to, but I just needed to. Sharing yeah. ideas, found like. Yes, bouncing ideas is <laughs> in my office. Yeah. 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 And the training piece is difficult. There's certain things that just all that stuff is in the policy, I think, in pieces. The performance measures that Brian was talking about, yeah, those can be pre agreed upon too. Like Dave's question What is your threshold for a high priority email? But that makes it a little different, yeah. The low priority email, and mine is less than 24 hours for anything, anyway. But I'll try to tell the answer to that and just put an exclamation mark on it and say, That's me, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, you have a small crew. Let me tell it's you. Not what talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. That was, I remember those days. Can you even text with that? You can't text with that. Can you? Yeah, but it. What, what point? You, 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 you <laughs> remember the ABC? You have to push. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> you, you never had to do that? Oh, my God. I don't know like that late. 20 years. Oh, no. the last week. Oh. I bet you I'd go through one a month. Well, they're too expensive for that. Oh, the pricing. Yeah, we should have known. <laughs> I'll tell you what. You'll buy my curtains the first month, the last, I will switch over. So, you will? Like, what, what do you smash them? Oh, oh. okay. So, anyway, you just need one of the super duper cases. It makes some really first good. thing I would do is get you a, a ballistic uh, case. They make it's yeah. called ballistic, yeah. and uh, um, and there's a few others, and then uh, you give it to you then. And that way you can take the thing and throw it against the wall if you want, and it still works. You didn't know about that technology, no. didn't you? So I now you can go out and buy one. I find that anybody with cushion jobs like the state households, so they don't worry about breaking them. <laughs> Especially in Washington. What are you saying? <laughs> Come, come follow me, my friend. Come follow me. I'm just saying, hang it. Like, you told wrong, somebody can write an email and take it wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so I think I think we're done. <laughs> well, do we have to adopt that policy? No. Oh, yeah. not, no, not even close. No, just no I think just to start, think. yeah. Just to start. Oh. It's just, it was this kind of conversation. You need a number of these conversations. Yeah. You know, it's just, you really. I'd yeah. recommend that the board. Board adopts the telework policy. We have it going on now without a policy. Right. And there will, there will be some continuing on stuff, whether it's rat maze, only planning, Allison, that need you know, guidance. Well, the we, made, we made it up on our own so far, but we need to have something you know, sure. that works for everybody so there's no regrets. Or Absolutely. Is this my phone on? Yeah. yeah okay. Close the meeting. I make a motion to close the meeting. Very good. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. Oh, okay. I know. It's kind of raining out there, too.